qualifier event. I am Ian Kenobi Boyle with the Wise Guys. This is my associate, Daniel Gerwell. And we are bringing you guys the latest action from the uh, feature table here at Collector's Cash in Lenexa, Kansas. We're very excited for this opportunity to be hosting the live stream event. And we want to give a special thanks right up front to Collector's Cash, the tournament operators, for asking us, members of Team Wise Guys, to be the ones to host the live stream with, live stream with you guys today. So thank you very much, Collector's Cash. And we really appreciate this opportunity. Thank you as well. I would like to say that as well. And let's have a great day, guys. Yeah, let's like. Hopefully, we get some people here in the stream here in a few minutes. The uh, the first round of uh, competitors has already been put out, and we're just waiting for people to kind of get settled and make sure that uh, the judges have their opportunity to give their announcements and just share the stream as we go and and let people see what's going on today. And I don't want to butcher a name here, but it looks like we're going to have 188 people. Wow, that's a good number. Yeah, 94 tables. And Mr. Devin Banham is at table 94, the very bottom table. Oh, yeah, very good. <laughs> that's a good place to start, Devin. Start from the start from the bottom. Now he can climb his way back up. Actually, where Where is reigning champion Thomas Cambraco seated right now? Let's see here. Cambraco is at table 17, playing against... Mark Saltkill, so I'm not very familiar with that name. And actually, why does it go from table 91 to 94? I am not sure. <laughs> there are apparently two tables that cannot be named. 92, 93, just they don't exist. No, I guess they must just, be in the other realm. Yeah, this is a shadow realm tables, guys. <laughs> tables 92 and 93 today are in the shadow realm. See, Lori Calcos has stolen some souls. <laughs> <laughs> there will be no people. There will be no live stream on Tables 90. Those 93. are dedicated to the Winner Mats. Right, the Winner <laughs> It's a hostile environment, you guys. Oh, no. That is so weird. That's got to be a typo. All no, right. it can't be a typo. No, yeah. And we got round one. I'm going to butcher this guy's last name. Joseph Stukath? Stukrath? Yeah, I'm thinking it's Stoikrath that, and that Kevin good. Spooner. That sounds easy. Well, let's see if our guys are at the table yet. We'll go ahead and switch camera views. You see them out there, it looks like. All right, looks like they are getting set up. So I'm going to take a second to figure out which one's which, and then we will update the information on the stream. And see if you can get their deck list. Not the, not the deck list, but you know. All right, guys. And while Ian's getting that, we will, you know, just chill. Hopefully find out, you know, like you said, who's on which side and who's playing what deck. Kevin's on the right. Kevin is on the right. Um, why is it not letting me change that? Come on. Is there a reason it's not letting me change it? You know how to do it? Six Samurai and True Draco. Six Samurai and True Draco. All right. Oh. <laughs> yeah, right. Other properties. I was. <laughs> Were you trying to rename it? Yeah. <laughs> Way to go. I've I changed it back. All righty. I'm just used to mine, where like I just you know I so titled it there. <laughs> Kevin. Spooner. Spooner playing. Six samurai. Six samurai. And you erase the Kevin Spooner part. What? <laughs> <laughs> Right, I need to get a wise guy shirt. I know, right? It's a good thing you were in a team cash shirt. Well, I mean, I remembered that. All right, and Joe. They must have misspelled that. That's. Is that really how his name's spelled? No, they had to have. They had to have messed that up. Choice of Stuckroth playing True Draco. Now, I wish we had their deck list, but I'm curious to see. I assume he's playing the Erupt version. Yeah, almost certainly. I'm not seeing an extra deck anywhere on there, although it could just be a case where he has told his opponent his extra deck will be in the deck box, which is... If he doesn't have one, is illegal. It's not illegal as long as the question asked is how many cards are in your extra deck. Because you have to say the cards in the extra deck. That is so misleading. As a former True Draco player, you just kind of have to be aware of the very specific nuances. You be a True Draco player, you have to be kind of a lawyer. That's 
Sounds like I don't want to play you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually sat down across somebody at the Omaha Regional playing Draco, and I sat down and they said, how many cards are in your extra deck? That was the first question they asked me. So you have to tell them the exact number or else you're misrepresenting the game state. Because it's public knowledge there. So when he asked, I gave the answer zero, and he immediately knew what deck I was playing. I'm going to remember to ask that specific question now every time. Well, I always ask how many cards in deck, though. I do ask that. Yeah, you can ask uh, cards in deck, cards in side deck, cards in extra. Sometimes people will ask you the question, do you have an extra deck? And the answer can technically be yes, but the number of cards is zero. And it's, it's a fine line whether you're trying to intentionally misrepresent the game state. <laughs> I was going to say, that becomes down to an investigation from a judge where they, technically speaking, could be like, you knew what he meant. Right, you knew what he meant. You <laughs> we knew we what he suspect was really the foul asking. play here. <laughs> Inspector Detector suspected foul play. I love the Speed Racer movie. <laughs> Dude, I saw that movie like a month ago, actually. I randomly just sat down and watched it. I hadn't seen it in like 10 years. Totally underappreciated. One of the greatest live action representations of source material ever. I, I was actually looking into it and they actually like after I watched it I read something about they were talking about maybe making a second one. Oh, like recently. Excellent. The same actor, can't think of his name right now, who played Racer was even like, yeah, no, I'd I'd do it. It was a lot of fun. It was a good movie. Alright, so the dice roll has been cast. We know what's going on. The decks have been cut. The field center has been put in play. We've got an old school Dragon Ball Z Nappa trading card. Oh, that is the awesome. old school version. And I know that there have been like 12 versions of the Dragon Ball card game, but... I do like Super. Super has uh, stuck around longer than I thought it would so far as a card yeah, game. Yeah, so far so good. So let's see what's happened. I'm is seeing a rivalry? rivalry of the Warlords in the hand. That's going to be useless in this matchup for the most part. We got a United. Six Samurais going first, so that's going to be an opportunity for him to combo off uninterrupted since Draco plays no hand traps, of course. I'm gonna laugh if he's playing like nine hand traps. Today. Right, that would be really <laughs> wild. And not, you know, he's actually playing Invoke Draco <laughs> with, with danger cards. Yeah, his his his, uh, his extra deck really is in his box, and I was right the whole time. And then you were the butthead. Well, looks like we're uh, making it a sold. We've got some viewers coming up in the stream, so guys, please, you know, don't be afraid to say hello in the chat and get that going. Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us. We got Adirk17, uh, Blargs Say Elite, Billy Cheesesteak1, Kyle Hose, Mebra Customs, Primoge2012, and the Zack Cannon. The Zack Cannon. And we got a couple other viewers that aren't signed into Twitch, but still welcome to the chat. We appreciate you stopping by. Yeah, absolutely. Give us a wave in the stream. Can you just and send a Curse Bamboo Seal sword and Divine Sword? I am he seeing... said two bamboo swords because he searched golden and something else. Yep, and he's getting ready to really try to go off here with that Isold. Do we think he's gonna U lock him? Oh no, he's going for the uh, he's going for the hero, the he the oh, wrong Meondin or whatever it's called block. <laughs> he's he he's looking like uh, I think this is gonna be over quick for that Draco player if he doesn't have the ability to summon on his next turn. He's going to get OTK'd really hard. And he's got a Beavis and Butthead shirt on. you got to appreciate the... Right. It's that match. MX Saber Invoker that's really... Whew, that card is savage in this deck because once he gets the the cards he needs on the field... I've personally thought Invoker needed to be banned for a while now. It is only used for ridiculous combos. Exactly. But, it's you just know, an enabler. Konami has... you know They seem to have no problem allowing really... Oh, there's the summon sorceress. Oh, yep, gosh. he's going for the next level four so he can overlay and get his first his starter for the combo going. I'm waiting for the day that we can re-break Erratic Dragon King of Tomb. Oh, man, I'm interested. <laughs> Why is he giving him a monster? That's so strange. I would never give Draco a monster for any reason. Maybe to play around the Gamma? Possibly. Potential Gamma? But, but I feel like he would have gotten Gamut already. Yeah, he would have gotten Gamut. I'm not seeing, you know, because obviously Draco, again, doesn't really run hand traps. not an erupt version, but... Yep, there we go. We've got... We've you know got, Kevin doesn't know he's playing Draco. Why did he give him the monster? Well, I guess he used it to pop oh, a monster on the field as the a effect. requirement. Yep. That makes sense. Okay. So now he can use the six samurai, the shadow six sam, to special summon from the from the grave. Or add it sense. to the hand. Now I see what he's doing. So, yep. We were baffled there for a second, though. I was like, I don't get it. He's really trying to go off here and, and build that board. So I think that he's going for, for the... That, that wrong me on or whatever it's called log. Oh, Let me see if I can man. pull up his name. I'm ready to see this. It's one of the most butchery names ever. You just like wouldn't expect to see it. I love Samurais too, man. 
Rongo Mi Rongo Miniad. I think that's his name. Yeah, number 86, Heroic Champion Rongo Miniad. And there he is, guys. He's already on the field, and he has... Every, he, he most likely has everything he needs now to get the extra cards on the field to summon the number card that allow him to uh, to stack up the uh, to stack up the Rongo material, and he'll probably have Rongo. Is that soul? Does, no, that's not soul charge in his hand. I thought it was for a oh, second there. That would, that would be so way good. too broken. Yeah. So looks like they're trying to figure out the last of it. Um, I don't think he's passing turn quite yet. He's just letting his opponent cut the deck. And how many materials are under that heroic champion right now? Uh, right now, I think it is uh, three? three materials. So he needs another Xyz summon uh, to get the other materials on there to have six materials underneath it. I feel like Samurai's could. Break. Oh, he's already scooped. <laughs> oh man, we're going to scoop phase already. Round one, game one. Kevin we have Spooner got Kevin Spooner. It. Jeez, man. That Rongo lock is just so powerful when it that, goes off. I want to read it. Like, yeah, absolutely. Just to make sure I know what it's doing. Well, because it didn't have four, the Draco player probably could have still played. Well, no, because you have the other the no, the other number card that allows you oh, to, yeah. to stack yeah. under it to attach his materials in the combo. Um that combo, of course, came out of the Omaha Regional just uh, just a few uh, weeks won, ago. Right? Yep, the number one, one with six samurai, and he, he's the one that innovated that number 86 lock, essentially. Uh, so that would have given him roughly two turns of no summoning, and that would have just been an OTK. There would have been nothing that uh, that Joseph could have done to stop that, which is unfortunate. What about that new samurai trap that nobody has found a way to abuse yet that skips your opponent's turn? Uh, Any we'll card see. that says skip your turn, I feel like we should find ways to break it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We got to, you know, you got to find ways to exploit and innovate in the in the current meta game, but right now, you know, between between the cancer of the extra lock and uh and and uh, stun stun plays like this number 86 lock, it's really rough out there. Uh, right now the current meta is one player plays Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> That that is that and that's yeah, not very fun for necessarily everybody. The Sky Striker mirror is great. You know, it's pretty interactive, and if we didn't have cards like the U-Lock, or like I say cards, but if we didn't have ways to so easily do the U-Lock, the format would actually be pretty interactive. Yep. You'd be able to main deck cards for teching in the mirror match, kind of like Zoo Format. Yep. Zoo Format, you know, now that I look back on it, Looking wasn't back as bad. On it wasn't nearly <laughs> as bad as we thought. I remember playing at the Lexa Regional. I played Chaos Max and during Zoo Format. You're like, I hate this format. And I was sitting there going, man, I hope we get a ban list like a lot of people were this week. They were thinking, coming up on the Lexa Regional, they were like, man, I hope we get a ban list, but it didn't happen. So I played Chaos Max and Zoo Format, and I just got annihilated. Well, and then literally, not surprising, right? I know, right? <laughs> and then literally on Monday, a ban list came out, and I was like, it killed Zoo, and I was like, come on, Konami, you couldn't have given this to us one week ago. I could have topped with Chaos Max. <laughs> Maybe not top, but I mean, it wouldn't have. I wouldn't have had my dreams crushed. I wouldn't have been reminded why I can't play decks I want to play. Right. This is why we can't have nice things. Well, hey, you never know. With the incantation support, maybe Chaos Max can be good now. So, did he just leave his Erupt on the board? He scooped before his opponent knew what he was playing. I'm really curious, because this is technically a violation of the game state. Well, I, I, well, I mean, yeah. I'm not worried about that part as much. I'm worried, like, why? You scooped before he saw your deck. Right. You have a massive advantage to go into the next game and just, you know... I guess... Oh, wait, no. He didn't. They're in-game already. Oh. Okay. Now it makes sense. He popped it with diagram. Sorry, Ignore we, me. We got caught up in what we were doing instead of paying attention. The side to the deck stream. went so quickly. That yep. Well, I mean, chances are the Draco player didn't side at all, and he just decided to go first. But curious that he would pop and erupt. Um, I guess he sat. I think I saw one in his hand still. So that's chances are what he's going for. His hand may be awkward. He's uh, taking a minute to shuffle here. He didn't take this long to shuffle side decking. Right, so I'm, I'm a bit confused as, as to where he's going in his mind right now. Um, he must have had Ignis Heat in his hand. Uh, looks like that's what he searched for off the diagram. Curious, I see a demise curious there. choice because in this in this situation, what? why why is he demising for one card? 
I see a spell that it's a Raigeki. That's a he Raigeki. Could've he could have set the Raigeki. I guess he doesn't have. Ah, uh, see, that's what happened. He didn't. Oh, have... it's an Ash. Oh, he's gonna have to lose the Ash. Discard your hand for demise. Oh wow, no, he's still got his cards in hand. This is a violation of the game state. Ah. Uh, well, this is an irreparable game state right now. Now officially. Yeah. No, this is. This is a technical loss. What is? is are we under an obligation to say something? Because we can't. I feel like we're not supposed to. We can't. We're not Last allowed time to. I interrupted, but I'm allowed to go grab a judge. Oh, they're fixing it. Yeah. Okay. It's technically fixable enough. Yeah. Okay, good. So We'll just leave it be. They fixed it as players. Yep, yeah, that's good. It's it's, it's good. And, and honestly, uh, I'm impressed that nobody's trying to rule Shark here. Um, because with the, the, the situation, the game state as it was, it was really irreparable. But the fact that uh, they were willing to work that out between the two of them is a really good sign of sportsmanship, which is one of the reasons I love the Lenexa region. We have so many really sportsmanlike players here. I agree. Most of us aren't sharks. In reality, it would have just ended in like a warning for both of them because luckily Ash and Raigeki needed to be in Grave. He revealed a smoke signal, but it's likely he would have activated it anyway. Nobody had touched their deck yet. Had he resolved the Ignis Heat effect to search in response? Actually, wait a minute. That's another thing. They were trying to ash the sm signal and chain Ignis at the same time. I just realized that. Yeah. yeah Luckily, they fixed it again. <laughs> exactly. They, they fixed the game state, and, and we are where we are. This is what we get in round one. <laughs> it happens. Anyway, we're looking for some love from the chat, you guys. We got 15 viewers right now, and I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on the current state of the stream and uh, as well as the, the one here. Got a bunch more people in here. Is the Zach Cannon still in with us? No, it is not. Zach Cannon's gone. What? We gave you such a great shout out. Sambino7711, Kitten Feathers. That's Brady Shields. Welcome, Brady. A Dirk17313, Gamer underscore YT. Voidshot X. That's a pretty sweet name. I'll give it to you. Virgo Pros? With a Z. V and K? Uh, right. I guess that's probably two people. I think Slow Cool. I think that's a bot version. Yeah? Yeah, just from my stream personally, I think that's a bot. Okay, that makes sense. Like like one of those like viewer bots. Show some love, chat. We want to interact with more than ourselves today. I mean, like... I know, love Ian and all, but... <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't mind Danny. He's a good guy, but if I'm going to interact with somebody, you know... All day. All day, I usually just prefer to interact with myself. Yep, nope, I agree. You know, privately. <laughs> 15, 20 minutes at a time. Dueling book. I yes, dueling book games. That's exactly what I meant. That's exactly what I was meaning. So we've got some more activity going on here. It looks like he's trying to set up wrong, uh, the wrong, uh, the Rongo lock. That's what I'm going to call it. Or the number 86 lock. Uh, Rongo mini ad is such a frustrating name to try to say. Let's see if maybe, maybe we can do some activity here to encourage folks to participate in the chat some more for some reason i i sent a message and i didn't see it in there so it's kind of weird i'm wondering if maybe i follow the link on my my phone to the twitch stream that we have posted that perhaps we'll be able to get some more activity we'll see but yep he's going off on the engine looks like he's got everything he needs to make rongo with six materials yep there we go more swords like that, crazy. Nope, that's all she wrote, guys. That's Rongo with six materials. And at this point, he is in a really ugly position. He opened the combo both games. <laughs> right? Philly Cheese Steak 1 saying he doesn't need to make 86 for game, but it looks like he is. How come that's not popping up on here? Yeah, that's really strange. You might want to go ahead and, uh, and ask about that because I have the Twitch app, so I'm going to go in and I can manage the, the, the stream of the chat. Um kind of this way but at first i have to turn on my media sound but that's yeah really weird that it's not popping up on here uh that's uh that is very strange hold on we're gonna refresh this try typing something on your end just to yeah well, i sent something and my uh my tag came up so i'm not seeing it in there that's very strange. Pull it up in this one. Twitch.tv back. Like, let's go to the actual page, not the dashboard. Maybe? No, that would explain why we're not getting interacted with. And then 
and get rid of the dashboard live part. Just go to the standard one. Sometimes it's the dashboard that's just being weird. And oh, you handle this. Yeah, I was like, I know what I'm doing here. Yeah. I think I know what I'm doing at least. You know, <laughs> Joker like. Twisted says, test, test, girl is a noob. Test, test. Hello, TJ. How have you been, man? What's up? I am in the stream using my tag, TWG Kenobi. So that way I can at least interact with you guys here on, here in my, here, yeah. If for some reason the stream chat doesn't want to work for us up here, I guess we got it on the phones. I got my charger very close by if needed. Yeah, why is it? That's so weird. Okay, there we go. I'm seeing myself in there, there now. There we go. We All got right, it. All right, cool. We are good. We are good. I will let you manage the chat as you are the Twitch master. Could have just looped red and blue to pop his board and then swing for like way over 9,000 samurai players with the tunnel vision. Ah. So it looks like they scooped and they're signing. So that was a really quick, quick round one. The winner of this round is going to be Kevin, Kevin Spooner, Spooner with, with the Rongo Mianad 2 That was just a Rongo Miniad. That, that was something else, y'all. But it was excellent show of sportsmanship on the two players, especially when they had that illegal game state going on. But nevertheless, it was resolved peacefully between the players. But there's really not a lot you can do when that number 86 hits a field with six materials. I mean, that's basically game. Is that a cherry? Is that Kevin Spooner sided in? It looks like it. Did he not ask about the extra deck? Uh, did he not maybe notice he didn't. no extra deck? Well, you know, some players just make assumptions and, and don't ask too much. So or maybe that's what he cited out. That's a definite possibility. That would make more sense that he cited it out. But that's where we're at, yo. And this, the slips look like they've been signed and are ready to be collected. So We got round one done and over with. Yeah, that was a real fast one, too. So um, we might have to fill up our... Our, our, we might have to fill up with something else in, in the time we have here. But we'll interact with you guys here in the chat as well. Um, we may get an exhibition match uh, put together for you. But until then, it looks like we can go ahead and transfer into the booth here in a moment. You guys keep looking at me like I'm going to say something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm You're about to be on screen. I mean, oh. Hello, everybody. Welcome this back. is one of our amazing judges that we have here today. Keith is here. Hola. Thank you very much, Keith. We always appreciate the judges that we have here. It's a very important component to our ability to have a smoothly run tournament. And the knowledgeable judges that are here, like head judge Richard Simpson, are a very uh, excellent resource to us in the community. So very much thank you, Keith, for being here today. Thank you. We uh, pretend to know what we're doing. I absolutely know what I'm doing. I don't know what Keith is talking about. They're I don't know trash. what I'm doing. I'm on the same page as him. That's okay. Thank you very much for, for coming in and joining us, Keith. We appreciate you being here. Your name is Daniel Goodwill. Your name is Ian Kenobi, and my name is Yu-Gi-Oh! Regionals. <laughs> yep. Wait, he is you the... saw me in a booster seat on Facebook? Um. Oh, you saw <laughs> Keith in a booster seat on Facebook. I saw that. Let's see what the what? Who said that? TJ Thomas. What? Joker Twisted. Booster, y'all crazy. He I saw you at Fuddruckers in a little booster seat crazy, with your crowns. Man, I, ain't, nah, I, I don't know. That's, that's I mean, he might have been. With, he might have been with Cookie, and Cookie could have been in the booster seat. You know, father son, they look so much alike. That's <laughs> <terrible>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're yeah. not wrong though. Put some respect on my height. I right? <laughs> right. Hey man, so, I get it. You need to see better. I mean, I'm. I sitting, do the same thing. I'm sitting for a reason. I don't want to make you look bad. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you are almost as tall as Keith sitting down. That's really. <laughs> I mean, you got me dwarfed too, though, so that's not very fair. Well, at least I'm. Well, no, I think that that game was shorter than my height, so <laughs> I think I think I'm good. That game made Cookie look tall. Oh, ouch! I will tell kid that you say what's up whenever I see Akeem. I promise. We will definitely do so. Hopefully, we'll see Akeem here at the feature table later today. Usually, he finds a way to get onto the live stream at some point during this regional event. Yep, he, he got top 12 at the UDS. He's I would not be too. surprised. Not be Dang, there. this this negativity is bringing me down. He is bringing me down. You're ruining my mood. I we haven't might have gotten a Snickers yet. I'm not myself when I don't have a Snickers. 
Uh, it's see, that's judging I got a Snickers right here. How many Snickers weird judge almonds, calls have which you is had not today. a sponsor of this stream at all. We are, of course, sponsored by the excellent collector's cash Ooh. you see here. Shout out to, once again, our, our excellent hosts, Collector's Cash, giving us this opportunity to be here in the stream with you guys together. Hey. But I definitely need this because I know I'm not myself without a Snickers. Snickers satisfies. It really does. The almond version is amazing. Just just putting that out there. Hello, Mr. Dad Judge Man. So, let's see. That's Brady Shields saying hello. Hello, Brady. Let's see. Uh, I got to walk time. around and uh, scout some of the decks that were out there playing. Got some crazy, insane rules, too. Uh, one guy wanted to know if uh, if he summoned his rescue cat, if he can activate the effect upon summoning. Like, you know, priority is still a thing or something. It, it's not, so you can't do that. Um, I miss priority. Yeah, somebody was trying Priority's to set great. monster cards you know in the uh, spells and trap zone, like uh, Infernity format. That was another good one, good classic. Mm -hmm. um, what, was he playing Bubble Man? No, he's playing um, Ultra Guys. I hope so. he said a Silver Sentinel. It wasn't a Silver Sentinel. It was a... Uh, uh, I don't know what it was. It was an Altergeist monster. Right. So oh, man. When Silver Sentinel was the first monster to go in the... PPT, baby! Hey. Yeah, we got some shout-outs going on in the stream. Definitely shout-out to all the teams in Kansas City who love and support the Yu-Gi-Oh! community. There's a lot of them. There are a lot of them. It's a very diverse community, and it's always exciting to have a bunch of friendly competition going on between the teams. So I definitely love that. It's an excellent, you know, what makes Kansas City so great. Speaking of, <coughs> we have a lot of players from outside the Kansas City area as well. I heard today from Head Judge Richard that there are at least 20 people in town right now for the Lenexa Regional from Oklahoma alone, which is wild. I know that this stream is being shared across uh, across the country to uh, into different Yu-Gi-Oh groups as well as other places, and hopefully that'll bring in a lot of people. That way you have an opportunity to see your local players here in Lenexa trying to perform their best and chase that invite. So um, shout, excuse me, shout out to everybody who's here from out of town, especially that massive contingent from Oklahoma. That must have been quite a drive for some of you. I was wrong. Toy Magician was the first monster to go in the Spell and Trap Zone. I forgot that that was a card. Was it Toy Magician? I, there might have even been another one now. Weren't the Union cards? Magician, weren't the Union monsters the first ones? But they couldn't be set. That's true. They couldn't be set. That's what I care about. Okay. Technically, if we want to get technical, yes. The yeah, if we're going to get really technical, first. Union... I mean, like, I know I'm old school. Whenever, you know, they post those questions, what was your first What was your first set in Yu-Gi-Oh? And I'm like, uh, Legend, set, Legend of Blue Eyes. Legend of Blue Eyes. Uh, Structure deck, yeah, starter deck, <laughs> Yu-Gi. <laughs> starter deck, Kaiba. <laughs> Shout out. I think the very first monster I set in the back row was, like, in front of the Archfiend. Yeah. Uh, I, based on the table list, it looks like we have a total of Nobody 184 players. There's how many players? 184. Uh, 188. Well, there's 94 tables, but no, 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 no. I'm telling you, like, the end count well, is 188. Actually, you know what? This is a good opportunity to resolve a burning question in my mind. Where are tables 92 and 93? Are they in the Shadow Realm? Uh, we're not sure, but they're missing. Because we got this list, and it's like... For proof to the stream... Where? Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's back that up a second. It goes from 91 to 94. 91 to 94, guys. So where are tables 92 and 93? As a judge, you should know this. I do know where they are. We deleted them. You deleted delete. them? Delete. Like, delete. Like from existence? Delete. Delete? delete. delete. It's a delete. wrestling thing. You guys delete. wouldn't get it. Are you, like I wouldn't, are you oh. sure I wouldn't get that? <laughs> he was ready. That's what's up, I didn't get it. He didn't get it. That's okay. He don't have to be in the night. I was just associating you to like the Omni King from Dragon Ball Super. No. And they were no. universes that got deleted. No. No? I'm so disappointed. Joker got the joke. Thank you. At least somebody got the joke. Yeah, hey, good job, man. Good job. I'm not. I'm not a wrestling guy, so cease and desist. Why? That was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> At least you guys all get your inside jokes. I don't. Yes. Anybody? Yeah. If you know, you know. Just don't tell Gerwell. I don't want him to know at this point. It's just not worth it. Can I find it on Google? Yes. Uh, right, they I'll are going to have you guys to move the sign that you guys have behind the. Do we have to? Yes. And you, move it, and you can move it back. The reason that it's there. Can, I understand, but okay. you can move it back uh, when, it, when it, the next round starts. Okay. We will do that then. So I'm going to go ahead and, and move that now for you guys, and then uh, we will go ahead and, and keep that going. So keep them entertained. 
Well, that's not very hard because I just, you know, I'm here. I'll just scooch over a little bit. Everybody's bailing on me. Now I'm all alone with you guys. The next regional and everyone wins the event with Mega Jank. What do we think will win? Unfortunately, I have a feeling that we're going to see a Goki deck win today. I don't like Gokis, but that's, you know, the U-Lock's a thing. And if somebody's playing it correctly, I think they're going to win. Otherwise, I'd say uh, Trickstar Sky Striker. You know, if for some reason it's not Goki, probably going to be Trickstar Sky Striker. I know Devin got third at Oklahoma, or was it St. Louis last week? One of the regionals, and I know he's playing the same deck list again this week, so... I'd imagine that those are the two we're seeing. I haven't seen an Element Saber deck, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's one out there. But in the current format, I just feel like that deck's just not seeing play because of how What's up, guys? Is. I'm back. You see an Element Saber deck out there while you were out there? I haven't noticed one. I've seen some Cyber Dragon. I've seen uh, Odd Eyes. We've got some Odd Eyes players here today, so I'm really excited about that. Yes, Pendulums. Uh, yes, Pendulums. There is at least one Pendulum Magician deck. I think that uh, Aaron Dugan's piloting that one today. All right. I can get behind Pendulums. So that's very exciting. I like Pendulum myself. I'm a big proponent of Pendulums. I kind of... One of the Odd Eyes players here is my little homie from Leavenworth, and he is playing my deck today. Yes. So I'm very excited to... Hopefully he does well with it. Um, I want to so. see it happen. Yep. And I think that Odd Eyes is one of those archetypes that when people see it, they're just really happy to see somebody playing it. And I think that a lot of legacy decks are like that. Yeah, if I ever see like a just like a weird hero deck, not like, you know, yeah. Dark Law beatdown, but just like Exactly like a cool hero deck, I, I'm almost like, Man, I just want to scoop to this guy. Right, just I so just exactly just, just so just he can get let him do well so that maybe <laughs> like he can get a like a an invite with, with heroes, that'd be great. Um, but you know, reward them. Mermails is another example of deck like that. I think that a lot of people just like seeing mermails when they play it. That's because it's so pretty. Exactly. They look <laughs> at that, so that, that that max rarity mermails and they're like, I want to go live under the sea and be a mer person. Or an Atlantean. I mean, either or. Right. No. Exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah. they also asked who we what we think will win. I said I think Goki or Trickstar Sky Striker, but I think Goki first. Interesting. Um, I would love to see a uh, Cyber Dragon Sky Striker win. Because Cyber Dragon, it's like when your archetype is your, your main strategy is your arc in your archetype literally lets you bust the U lock as just like a side benefit to playing it. I feel like I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for Cyber Dragon to have its moment. And then I'm not sure why it could like, I feel like the format because the way that I see the format is there's Goki, and then the rest of the format is Grind. Like, Sky Striker is essentially a resource grind deck like Zoo was. And then you have Draco, Altergeist. Invoked. Invoked, BA. All of these decks are inherently grindy. I mean, Invoked is a little little bit different, but... It depends Still, on how it plays, because, yeah, it has a one-card fusion every turn. Right. So depending on how they've built their deck, they're either a quick-kill-you deck... Or a, yeah, no, I'm going to grind you out for 20 Right, versions. and because of Mattis Invoker, they can pop out two, two fusions really quick. So I see a lot of people building a board where they'll they'll create Mechaba, and then they'll either do Mechaba number two, or some people I've seen have been going into Kaliga. Yep, and I really like the Kaliga play just because it's right. almost a mini soft lock if you do it correctly. Right, and thematically it's really cool because you see Alistair transforming into that monster in the cards, and it's like... Final phase. This is my final form. Ha, 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 ha. That is a good way to look so at it. So that's a really fun fun way to do it. I'm a big fan of card lore, so that's just me as a from my perspective. Devin should have played the plant deck I theoried out so he could U-board people the cool way. Well, yes, but I feel like he didn't want to play it because he didn't want to lose to more hand traps. All right. To be honest, Cyber Dragons and Magician are some of the crazy sleeper decks. No, I can agree there. They are yeah, very, very well. And with I, Alistair Horn and Drones, you can make two Mechaba and Kaliga together. Yep, that's Yeah, I've that seen true. I've seen some people trying to combo that out and, and um the only pro the you know, and, and it's really easy to do. Uh, I the only issue is that some people misplay it because they don't understand that you can only shuffle back invocation once per turn. There's, yep. there's some people who misplay that. They think they can recycle that invocation twice, and that really, that's not how it works, unfortunately. If it did, I would love it. That would be wild. I, I think that that would really just break that deck in a lot of ways if you could continue looping. But, like, 
it, it's so funny to see what Konami will build to allow you to loop and what you can't. And, and just the, when they slap a once per turn on something here and not there, and it's like, why does Cyber Dragon, or not Cyber Dragon, but Firewall Dragon, just to get to continue spamming summons without any any grinding. But they have a bunch of cards that are similar to Cyber, uh, to, I don't know, why, why do I keep trying to call it that? To Firewall. We were talking about Cyber Dragons. Exactly. It's okay. You, you got Cyber Dragons on your mind, I got Zane. I got Zane on the mind. <laughs> I just, I don't need that Kaiser Rio deck. That's another great question. Who would win at the end of the show? Zane with his dark deck or Jaden with all of his Neospatians? And I just naturally picked Jaden because I feel like he grew a lot more as a character throughout the show and I just became very biased. He's also my favorite character. Yeah, Jaden's pretty <laughs> awesome. And I always just think, like, I'm pretty sure that Jaden is the second best duelist in the entire series. Mm -mm. I feel like he would beat Kaiba. At the, once we're at the end of GX, like, you know, end of Season 4. I think that there's a good argument for that. I think it's going to be eight rounds with 32 invites with 180 people? Um, I'd have to look it up to see for sure, but we could ask one of the judges to get a hard so answer on that. We could easily get the answer. But, yeah, so looking at eight rounds today, it's going to be pretty good. Man. Hopefully we get some cool action with some of the interactive decks. Yeah, I don't want to see... I, I'm really I don't hoping, want a round like what we just had. Right, I'm really hoping that the feature table is not who can make the other person unable to play Yu-Gi-Oh! the fastest, because that's going to really grind this day out. And that's why I'm not playing in the tournament today. Right. <laughs> I don't want to play with the, hey, I got my combo, do you have the out? Nope. All right, game two. I mean, that's how... It, <laughs> I mean, like, when you think about it, that's... that's a, the When the format is fresh and new... You have the opportunity to have a bunch of different variety in your in your decks. Just like right after the XFO list came out and nobody knew what the, the meta was gonna be like. That was so awesome. The regional the regional happened here right after that last time. That was such a great regional. There were so many good decks and everybody was playing. It was like the only thing that mattered was who's better at Yu-Gi-Oh! And then slowly we crept into FTK format. And it's because people finally start discovering, or, you know, somebody discovers it and then it catches on. Hey, there was this combo that worked, yep. and that's what catches on, and we go, well, that's better than anything else in the format, clearly. Yep, and then we're going to jump onto that. It became, are you playing Pendulum FTK, or are you playing Draco Erupt Protect the Castle with Masterpiece? And everybody was like, I hate this format. And now, now looking back on that, it's like, is it, the, is it as bad now as it was during the FTK? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, are the, is the round up? Is the round up? 14. Cool. Oh, so. It's been fluctuating. We've got some activity going on in the chat. I'm wondering if my stream is keeping up with the... How soon do you think we'll get a list? You know, I said we would get a list... Before the UDS. <laughs> so, I'm sitting here thinking that Konami is going to pull uh, what they did with Zodiac last year. Yeah, it, and we're, we're going to go like eight Monday. months. No, no, no. <laughs> we're going to get a list on Monday, guys. I, I'm. You can basically take that to the bank. There is, there is no way that the 200th YCS is going to be done in this current format. There's just no way. It's not going to happen. I think it will. No, absolutely. If if the if I'm we, not going, if that's what happens, if we I don't get a ban list, I am not going to Columbus. I now I have all the plans laid out. I am ready to go. But if we are still in this current format, there's just no way. I mean, like, I'm not gonna lie, guys. My side deck at this point has has three Cyber Dragons, three Toon Cyber Dragons, and a, and a Mega Fleet in it, just to break the extra link. That's how bad this format is. You have to run six cards just to break an extra link. So the only problem I have with that entire statement is you started it out with, I'm not going to lie. So now I have to assume that every time you don't say that, you're lying to me. That does seem to be a very tough quandary for you to be in. <laughs> how honest is your co-commentator? <laughs> Am I lying? What is your opinion on lying? six cents? Oh, I mean, I had no idea Bruce Willis was a ghost until the very end of the movie. <laughs> the card, not the movie. Oh. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoiler Look, alert. If you haven't seen a movie within the five year the first five years that it was released, I refuse Look, guys, Snape kills Dumbledore and Jack <laughs> dies at the end of Titanic, okay? I don't know if you knew that or not. I didn't know either of those. Didn't read the books, didn't watch the movie. You know what's really funny? <laughs> 
He's, we've got a dude who's right in front of us. He's like picking his nose and shit. And I don't know that he even knows that we're there. <laughs> I don't think he knows we're in here, but yeah, I just watched him do it again. Yeah, he just keeps turning back and he's like, he's using it as a mirror. We get some very good visuals in this room. This is hilarious. I want to oh, know how man. many people will do that throughout the day. Joker twisted asking the elite versus the new day. <coughs> is that even a question? Why? Why would you ask that? Of course the elite. Ridiculous. Now we're going to see his response here. Well, his response is hopefully going to be correct. I mean, like, I can't even understand why you would ask me that question. I'm almost personally insulted. <laughs> we got players sitting down. I'm going to be looking for a deck list. I'll be right back. Uh, has the round started? Guess we're going to find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. Round's not even over yet. Man. We're going to get through this day, though, you guys. I promise you that. We will get through it together. And when it's all said and done, we can look back at this tournament. One sweet whoop whoop is my response. Well, when he gets back, we will let him know. There's still five minutes left in this round. Five more minutes? That's like an eternity. It does seem like an eternity. This is that point in the round where everybody starts slow playing each other to death. But you can't say anything to the judge because there's nothing you can do to prove that you're no, a like, uh, Cards and deck. Judge, he's trying to... No, <laughs> right. Cards and deck is a public knowledge thing. I want to know. Right. It's a win condition. That is a win condition, too. Yeah, this is where you lawyer yourself to victory if you're playing smart. If you're playing a combo deck, you're just like... Every 10 seconds you play a card and you're like... Surf then you deck. end an Aqua Dolphin to burn them for five. <laughs> Cowboy for game. Or, yeah. if you, or if you're playing, if you're playing Otis like I do, you just pendulum summon Overland Flare Metal Dragon, and you're like, Ugh. the better card is activating Sparks. Sparks, you savage! I'm a poison of the old man. You. All Sparks hits you for two hundred. That's okay with me. I hope you gain twelve. Right. Everybody should just start citing an Eye of Truth and Bad Reaction of Samochi. <laughs> I said one sweep. Reveal your back. hand, and then uh, uh, you take a thousand every turn. GG. One sweet whoop whoop is his response. One sweet whoop whoop. All I know, all I know, is that I think Night Assailant should come back to two, so I can do some degenerate loops with that card. I mean, this is the thing that needs to happen. Okay, Konami either needs to let everybody be degenerate as hell with every deck. You know, give me back Joker, give me back Double Iris, give me back Astrograph Sorcerer. Give me back Starving Venom. <laughs> no, 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 no. Starving Venom, as much as that is like one of my favorite fusion monsters And then of all import time. Revolution Dragon. <laughs> yeah, actually, I want Revolution Dragon. I'm really Burn, impressed we don't have that. Freaking, I can't believe it wasn't in BLRR, honestly. I'm quite surprised we also haven't gotten that new Pendulum spell card that lets you pot a greed from your extra deck. Oh my god, please don't. Like that's, that's really needed. Ugh. Man, they should have set the time rules to be like Dragon Ball Super. If someone isn't dead when time is called, the game is a draw. People really pick up the pace of fire. Yeah, see, that's yeah, that's that's a I lot. Can actually of, get behind I, that. I have a lot. We there are a lot of people in the community saying that we need to adopt rules for end of match procedures similar to uh, to Dragon Ball Super. Also, and correct me if I'm wrong because I don't play Dragon Ball Super, but in Dragon Ball Super you don't get to see the clock at all. That's that's my understanding. Yeah, it's turned to the judges. Mm. So it's kind of like you know you wear a watch, but game draws in time is horrible and competitive. Well. Yes and no. It's it's a no, we don't want draws, but that's the point. Is it forces you, like it, nobody wants to draw. Yeah, let it screw each time. player. Should get one turn. We should, in theory, you shouldn't go into time anyway. You should like it, you, when you enter a tournament, you should know your deck well enough and understand the game well enough to not have to go into time and think about every individual situation. That's true. But the problem is that players will be like me, for example, not have played for six months, understand the game, but not know any of the cards that are out other than the deck they're playing. And then they'll sit there and read every card. They could and just make rounds 50 minutes. They, yeah, they could also just increase the time rounds. If they gave us 10 more minutes, I don't think matches would end in time. That is also true. It's too confusing. But 
That's why I'm not a card game designer, nor a tournament organizer, nor somebody who they consult about this. I put in my application three times. They keep denying me. It's the interview. <laughs> You're just not likable enough. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly just am not a likable guy. They look at your face and they're like, nah. Nah, that's why I do over-the-phone sales for a job, not in-person sales anymore. Yep. They just look at you and you're like, you know what? Screw that guy. <laughs> Forget that guy. We don't like him. Pick someone else. <laughs> Pick anybody else. So just guys, do it. Question for the chat while we're waiting. We have plenty of time here to talk about different things. But what right now is your favorite deck in the current metagame? I would love to hear your responses. We'll read them live on the stream. That way we can keep you guys engaged. Meanwhile... Our buddy Kitten Feather says another huge issue is the mentality of Yu-Gi-Oh players who are going to do anything to get an edge to win. I mean, you could say that about Kevin Spooner, who just won with the number 86 lock and six samurai. That clearly is an incredibly degenerate lock, and it, it doesn't even create a U lock. It literally just puts one monster on the board that says, you can't summon, I have 3k attack, and I'm literally going to win the game in two turns. So what are you going to do? And the answer is... Nothing. Yeah, nope. If I was going to quit Yu-Gi-Oh! for another card game at this point, it would 100% be Dragon Ball Super or Magic. And if I had to pick, like, right away, I'd pick Magic just because of how long the game has lasted. I'm not going to lie. When I was deciding what card game I was going to get back into after my first daughter was born, I was like, I told my wife, I was like, whatever card game we pick, we're committing to it. We can't get out. And then... I learned about the state of Yu-Gi-Oh! And I was like, I'm not sure if I've made a horrible mistake or not. <laughs> you made a bad decision. Letting you know now. <laughs> I mean, like, I came back, like, two months before Zoo Format started. And, I right before Blue Eyes won Worlds, and I was like, hey, Blue Eyes White Dragon won Worlds? This can't possibly be that bad. And then I was like, oh. Oh, the Adderall Dark Link deck. It's a bunch of Armageddon Knights and stuff for Gokies. Yep. It's really fun, though. I agree. It's a pretty annoying deck that I really... Somebody was telling me they think Malicious is going to get hit to two. I would not be surprised if it goes back to two. At this point, any any card... And I really think that we need one of those massive, like, 86-card ban lists at this point. Agreed. 100%. I think we need another after Dragon Ruler format, September 2013. Yep. We need one of those, we hey, need, we're resetting the game. Yeah, we need something that radically resets the game... I don't think when they when they created Link Summoning, I don't think the intent was degenerate extra link one turn extra links. I really don't. I agree. I actually don't think that's what they intended. I think what they really intended was not to do that. <laughs> right. And and I and I know and I can't say that they never intended tokens to be used to link summon cuz clearly Hornet drones was created to link summon. Which, I, you know, I have no real issue with the Sky Striker engine as a whole. Right. I don't think that Hornet drones and Engage are really that degenerate. I think that, you know, the plussing is fine mm -hmm. because the way the cards have certain limitations and a pure archetype. I think the problem is that there's all these other decks that enable that so badly that yeah. that's what makes those cards bad. Like Lavaval Chain, as a card itself wasn't that degenerate. It's the fact that it can send so many degenerate cards and it's generic mm -hmm. that the card had to get banned, which is the same reason Hornet Drones needs to get hit because yep. it's it's generic and it, it it enables all these other degenerate cards because in order to make it not degenerate, you have to hit so many other cards. Right. I mean, and that's what's so crazy, right? I mean, there are just too many too many engines that allow you to summon more monsters from the deck. And it wouldn't be so bad if they, you know, for a good example of an engine that's not too much that's not a huge problem is like the DD engine in, in Magicians. Because you're plusing, you summon and you plus, but you have to have the two pieces of the engine to work together. But a lot of these are just like, oh, I'll start with malicious. You, you just have too many combo starters instead of instead of being able to work in a different way. But let's get some responses here from the chat. We asked the question, what's your favorite deck right now in the metagame? We've got a couple answers. Uh, Autlism says in Mech Knight Invoked OTK. I think that Mech Knight Invoked is probably the most fair and interactive deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! right now. It is the only, it is one of the only decks that you match that up, um, aside from maybe the pure Sky Striker matchup, where you sit across from somebody and it's like, if you're not better at Yu-Gi-Oh! than me, I will beat you. Especially, it's like, yeah, because the longer the game goes for Mech Knight Invoked, the higher their chance of winning is. Yep. Because they can consistently generate resources. 
they if, especially if they didn't cut out on some. One of my friends plays like a 45 card variant on Dueling Book. Mm-hmm. He didn't cut any of the Mech Knight cards. He didn't cut any of the Invoke cards. He was just like, I'll just play 45. Yep. And he has enough hand traps. And he's like, yeah, the longer the game goes, the higher my chance of winning becomes. Because right. the more that I chip away at their resources, eventually I still have a one card fusion. Yep, exactly. And that's one of the things... You know, I, I know that modern deck building theory is like 40 cards to max consistency, but when everything that you add in there is essentially a consistency card or a part of uh, an engine card, you don't necessarily have to stick with 40 cards. I mean, we've seen 60 card pendulum work in a lot of a lot of tournaments, and the reason that it works is because I, how is it a brick if you've got 17 Electromite turbo cards and four plus engines in the deck. Like when Zoo came out, I played sixty card Metal Foe Zoo with like three painful decision, yep. three three summoners art. I just had everything maxed out, and I was like, dude, it doesn't matter that I'm playing sixty. It's the fact that I'm going to do the same thing every turn. Right? It does not matter. That yeah, I'm at no, 60. It's, it's just that I wanted to play all the cards. Right, <laughs> and and you just make it work. You you just increase your draw power and move through your resources. And yeah, again, everything in the Metal Foes deck allowed you to make an Invoker, which allowed you to get to your Zoo Engine, which allowed you to do things. Yep. You had Bababoon. That card just fell off the map, too. Right, I know, where, right? where did Bababoon go? That, that was card such was a so huge, hype. And I'm surprised with all the extra normal summons we get with things like um, Goblin, Goblin and Firewall, like, where is the Bababoon engine at? Like... I'm actually surprised You'd think that'd be generating a ton of advantage right now, but you don't see it anywhere. It's the fact that we got to pop it. That, right? That, that's, the, that's the issue people have. But, like, you know, there's still cards like Diagram. There's still cards like Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. Yep. There's all these cards that technically could abuse it, and I get that there might be better cards. But that's just a card that's sitting in the back of my mind as a, I'm waiting for a card. Yeah, once the list kills a lot of stuff, Balbaboon's coming back, you guys. We're calling it now on this stream. You heard it. You heard it first here. Balbaboon's coming back once we get a reset. Let's see. We got uh, Bridge Tree 000 saying Pure Sky Strikers, their favorite deck <coughs> currently in the meta. Good, best resource grinding deck in, in the meta right now. Invoked is good now. He's right. Invoked is good because they can OTK you before that Philosophy of Fire matters now. But before Alistair Invoker of Madness, which only came out, what, three weeks ago? Two weeks ago? Uh, yeah, with uh, three, Shadows of a Hog. Three-ish weeks, yeah. yeah However, like three, four. It was a grindy deck, and a lot of people still play it that way. Yes, it has the OTK ability. Yep. But it, that's like that's like saying that Girgia is good because they can't... Uh, the Girgia format, that Girgia was good because they could OTK you with the Karkuri version, mm-hmm. yet the pure variant was actually better because it just grinded you down. Yeah, no, I agree. So, I mean, it has the mixed variant. Yeah, other. They can play under Goki. Can they not play under Goki? Oh, after the U-Lock? What deck can play after the U-Lock? Cyber Dragon. <laughs> that's the only deck we can play, right? Like that's, that's, that's not a valid argument, in my opinion. At least in my opinion. I could be wrong, but... Yeah, Invoked. I'm seeing a lot of people Tekken Invoked into a lot of stuff right now. I'm seeing a lot of activity on Facebook groups where people are Tekken and Invoked. Like, Blue Eyes Invoked has become a uh, subject of very high interest um, in, in those related groups. And... Um, I think more people are trying to tech invoked into just they're they're just looking at one card engines that allow them to start moving through resources um, while the you know because the current meta is just so degenerate that you have to have in a lot of instances especially with stuff like the Gumblar oh I hate Gumblar you're just like if I have one card in my hand and that one card is Alistair the Invoker I can still play Yukio kind of. Yeah, it's not. I will admit on that part, when you are just down to, like, if they have three cards and you just have the Alistair, it can be really hard to, it's almost impossible to grind it out. Cause, right. But if your Mechaba can't negate anything, they can get rid of it. And unless your one card is Kaliga and they can't get over it for whatever reason. Right. But that that's the other problem. Like, for example, like, I see where he's going with Goki, too. Is like, if Invoke doesn't have a strong enough opening, Goki's just going to plow through it. Right. Like, it's just going to be like, sorry, we had enough. We, we have enough. But... Not, that's why Goki just needs to, to have some sort of uh, I mean, to it. I, the extra ink is such a problem. I feel like they should so, they should have an emergency format change. I, I don't mind the extra link being a thing in the game. I mind that it's so, so easy, easy to, to make. make. That that's my issue with it in the game right now. Yeah, that is a hundred percent my issue with it. And I miss the thirty nine cards being the correct. See, withdrawal being a thing, it depends on the deck you're playing. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing that comment too. Um, oh yeah, I not playing that. the game in over eight months, still heavily in the mindset. The 39 is most correct, even with Droll. It's so important to have the most consistent opening. I, it, you know, it's like I said with the 60 card pendulum thing. Like, it, it all depends on the build that you're using and the resources you're trying to move through. Um, the opportunity to just increase the consistency of your engine, like as long as you're not blowing it down with spicy ass tech or whatever like it's fine i know a lot of people will want to go over 40 because they want to fit their little pet tech in there or they just want to fit extra resources to not run out and i agree with the uh i agree with the uh what's the word i'm looking for the 39 card deck being the thing mm -hmm. i 100 percent agree with that being most correct but it's just the fact that like sometimes you do need the additional resources like Unless you're like if you're playing a deck like Goki, thirty nine is correct in my opinion. You're just trying to get to your lock or your combo as quickly as possible. But if you're trying to play a deck like Sky Striker or a deck like Invoked, you're trying to be as consistent as possible. Yeah, you still want thirty nine, but also like if you're trying to build it around the idea of having the philosophy of fire or being grindy, you need more cards. All right. I'm seeing a lot of pushback on the commentary uh, about Invoked not being consistent <laughs> enough. And you see um, that? yeah, and so you know, again, one of the reasons that I like Invoked is because it's about skillful Yu Gi Oh! You know, a lot of the dominant decks in the format are not about interaction, they're about locking your opponent down. Draco is about play the floodgates so your opponent can't summon any monsters, they can have one monster on the field. You know, when they flip rivalry and goes in, you're just like, well, I normal summon and I end my turn. Like, and, and that's a problem in Yu-Gi-Oh! That reduces the amount of interaction, lowers the overall threshold of skillful play, and and just oh, it, it just doesn't do anything really to improve the state of the game. And I agree with the problem in Invoked. People either draw too many Alistair or not enough. So you open like double Meltdown, which you can only play one of, mm -hmm. and you open like an Alistair, and it's like, great, now I have... You know, my opening hand's three Alistairs, technically, and you don't want that. No, you Which don't. Which is why, like, then see, then you see people go into, like, the 45-card variants, because then it allows it not to happen as much. And they're like, now I can max out on terraforming, meltdown, and not feel like i got to cut it down. But then they're at 45 cards. Right. And 45, I, I don't think I've ever actually entered a tournament with more than 42 cards in my deck. Mm -hmm. Because with 42, the odds of you drawing, like, you know, one of a three of are still, like, it's like a percent lower i think i did the math once it's only like a percent lower but right. the odds of opening two of a three of go down like two and a half percent yeah so like i did that in my zodiac deck because you never wanted to open double rat right I, i've done that in a bunch of decks where you never want to open two of a specific card but i've never i don't think i've ever actually committed to above 42 in a tournament online right 100 of the time sure but when i show up to tournaments i don't think i've ever committed above 42 mm -hmm. that no that's a lie. Nationals 2017, I went with a Magician deck that was like 46 cards. Okay. But that's because I had the Zoo deck in it, and I kind of just winged it at the last minute. I and see. And I didn't really think about my deck, and I just kind of said, screw it. Okay. So I see what there, you there, was yeah. bad, right. there was a bad <laughs> mindset going into that Nationals. Oh. Friday night, I got really just like out of it. I was like, I don't even want to be here. This is stupid. And I just like built the deck the way I built it. But no, yeah. Kid and says you can solve the paradigm... Oh, yeah, that's with, true. By running Time Star, but at that point, you highly restrict your options. So that's what we got into on the drive to that Nationals, and that's why I had like that mindset of I don't want to be here, because I was planning on just playing pure Zoo or pure Magicians. Right. Then I decided to play Magician Zoo, and we got into this really long debate about siding Shadal Fusion, because I did it in Monarchs the year before to, right. out, to out the uh, Mask of Restrict. So you could send like shit all cards and pop right. the master strict, bring out a window, and then tribute the window. You see in table one set up, so I'm gonna step out real quick and get get our stuff. Oh, go for it. No, and that's the other problem though. Yeah, is like you can make time star to search the Alistair, normal the Alistair, but then you're stuck playing a pendulum deck. And my issue with pendulums now is not being able to pen summon five. Like pendulums lost all of their grind game. Like, and when I say all of it, they became an all or nothing deck, similar to like Mermails with triple megalo. And if you try to play it a different way, the deck's just very underwhelming, in my opinion. If you try to play a Pendulum deck in any other way, then I'm just going to commit to the board and try and just end it. I Maybe maybe I'm playing them wrong. But that's just how I've viewed Pendulums for the last, what, two years now? Year? Ever since Master Rule 4? We good? Kevin is back at table one. 
Kevin Spooner again. Yeah, we so got we're going to be seeing another Samurai lock. So we're going to go ahead and transfer to the table to the table and get try to get it set up. I didn't play at Nationals this year. Uh, I was busy with my girlfriend and my kiddo, and I just didn't have the ability to go. But last year, what did I do in 20... Oh, yeah, no, I lost to a guy who basically opened Exodia on me. I ended in a board of, like, Ragna Zero, Dryden, um... Was it Nat Beast? No. Did I have Nat Beast in my deck? I did. I played Nat Beast, yeah. It was it was literally an unbreakable board for Zodiac, and he had the Kaiju, he had Thoroughblade with a Zoo, and Shuffle Reborn Soul Charge, something else. He had literally the exact way to beat it, long story short. It, it, any other card in his deck would not have done, the, done it. And that was in what, round seven? Round seven, I think, Brady? I don't remember. I had a kind of weird showing that year. 46-card deck did not do what I wanted it to do, and that's that's probably why I'll never do it again. So we got Sky Striker versus Samurai? Yep, Sky Striker versus Six Samurai. I'm still waiting on a name um, from the list because I didn't want to miss uh, misspell it. So Kevin obviously doing the Samurai lock. Yep. Uh, which is all he's relying on. Brady pointed it out to me a little bit earlier, too. The guy had the last time. He didn't even have to lock the guy. He could have just put 20K on board and killed him. Probably, yeah. No, no, no probably. He had the ability to. He had well, you know, ability. sometimes with people who are um, building decks off of lists that they got. If they're just net decking in and see the combo, they don't necessarily learn the entire entirety of the deck. What's up? I'm just reading the... the the mat. He, the, he, Kevin asked me if he could use his own mat. And no. As long as it doesn't have an advertisement for another store, it looks like it's good. So yeah, that'll be fine. I don't know who Gara of Benton is, but I assuming that, that that's not a vendor. So. I don't either, but I'm pretty sure that they're not supposed to. Yeah, the rest of the tournament all? say no. Okay. I'll, I'll just say yeah. check because I may have misspoken. Yeah, I, I just uh, pretty sure they want the collector's cash logos up there. That's why like people don't use spellgrounds. Like a spellground doesn't advertise I'm for anything. Check with force real quick. Yeah, just make sure. It's only if he goes first though, right? Like the Sky Striker guy. Well, Sky Striker guy did go first. So that that is uh, Shizuku. He opened Ray into Shizuku. Very very uh, basic play here. He never finished typing the other guy's name, so I didn't catch it when he said it either because I was half listening to him. Anyway, very, very basic opening. Starts off with smoke signal over here. Samurai is super consistent, too. Into the, uh, all right. Is that an effect veiler I see in his hand? I don't know. I'm so used to seeing ultis in my hand. And a United. And there we go. There's the one. It's good? Yeah, he's good. So, yeah, just no other advertisements. Yeah, as long as it's not store. Nice. Well, now I know that next time I'm on stream, I can use my Spellgrounds. Yeah, and I would totally use my own map, but my problem is I only use the Collector's Cash mat. Oh. Yeah, yeah, no. I have a Spellground. <laughs> yeah. well, one day someone will notice that I'm playing Cash. <laughs> so I still don't have a name yet because I guess they're having technical difficulties at the judges' table with printing out the lists so far. So we're going to have the unnamed Sky Striker guy up there for a little bit until we get that clarified. But it looks like he's well on his way to setting up the Rongo lock again. So Kevin is really going to be a dominant force. We'll probably see him at the feature table until he loses Why at this point. Why did he impermanence just to stop the United? Uh, unfortunately, he probably didn't doesn't realize he's playing against the Rongo lock. It's such it's still such a fresh strategy that a lot, not a lot of people are very familiar with it. So he's trying to ash the uh, the ad. I guess he didn't stop it just to stop the United, but it did stop the United, so that's, you know, it's always good. That, you know, it's, it's true. The only problem is that if, he, if, he, gets that wrong, if he gets that wrong go on the field, it's, what's he going to do? And that, that bamboo engine is so strong. It does have its drawbacks, though. You know, like opening it. <laughs> right, oh my gosh. <laughs> As an Exodia player who played them in that deck, 
It's not fun to open them until you draw them into the magical stone excavation. Yeah, Kitten Feathers is saying he could have pushed through and killed him if his op- in his in his opening if he didn't have impermanence. Welcome to playing Gokies. I could have beat you if you didn't have impermanence and Ash, an ogre, and Bell because I can push through four hand traps sometimes. <sighs> <That's> savage. <laughs> so I opened a terror top. The only reason I play Pendulum right now still is because so few people are maining Ghost Ogre. And I'm surprised because it should be seeing more and more play because it's so good against Firewall and Summon Sorcerers. Right. Uh, so we'll see. Hopefully uh, hopefully that tech doesn't become yeah, too Yeah, the Ray prevalent. came back. And why didn't he... He didn't tribute the Ray to special Shizuku in Search in the End Phase. Um, you know, I missed what happened at that point, so I can't exactly comment on it. But it does sound like perhaps well, there was some misplays going on. There was. The Assault attacked over the Shiz. He respecialed the Ray. He should have end phase tributed the Ray to make us Shizuku to get another surge for either another engage, which because he already has one in hand, or like a Widow Anchor, just something, you know. So after now he's going for the Hayate. Yeah, yeah. He really should have gotten the the afterburner. But it looks like he stopped the Rongo lock, so we are going to go into the grind game now at this point. And Samurais do have a good grind game. I'm, I'm interested to see if Kevin knows how to play Samurais without the Rongo yeah, lock. Yeah, unless he, unless he really just practiced the Rongo lock super hard, we may be able to... Uh, oh, we got a here. list now. All right, looks like our opponent here is one Alex Colby. He's got like four names, but we're just going to put Alex Colby on there. Biggest problem with Samurai is that the deck really wants to open a ton of Bushido cards and combos together. If you don't, your opponent can just end your turns off of a single... Yep, and that that I've noticed too ever since the Samurai stuff came back out. And Brady, I know you grinded Samurai online for a while there. That was your deck of choice, and that was what you were grinding out for a while. So I know you know what you're talking about. All right, looks like we've got an identified Iowan... I'm guessing that's going to be Alex Colby because that uh, that shout out only came after we added his name. So we got Alex Colby out of Iowa playing Pure Sky Striker. Looks like he got a kind of weak uh, area zero off. Getting rid of his own multi roll. Yeah, you know I've seen a lot of people. I've, I've seen a lot of people that have decided that depending on what their hand is, they like to use engage to search the multi roll. Mm-hmm. And that's that's become a really skillful play that a lot of Sky Striker players have been doing. Because um, you just want it. The multi roll is so helpful. It really does allow you to just out grind your opponent to death because you can just load up that graveyard and then take advantage of of the the ability to pull your spells out of the out of the graveyard again. And then you set your iron wall so they don't get banished. <laughs> <laughs> they go to the graveyard instead. That's called Next Level Yu-Gi-Oh! So yeah, it looks like Altlism in the stream here is a homeboy with our guy here, Alex Colby, which is great. That's definitely Always awesome. autism. I am <laughs> trying my best to ignore the fact that I have an autistic daughter. And I have an autistic that, that, son as well. So yeah, that, that name is just slightly grinding, and I'm trying to find ways to butcher it slightly. Alright, we'll say Autlism. I'll get on your page. I guess I feel a little differently towards my child about it. That's just me. Uh, I just, you know, I, I don't think it's a great way to... I just now realize that we just bonded on that, though. I know, right? I didn't know that. See, now we know more about it. I actually just got my diagnosis last week for her. So but mine was like three weeks ago. Yeah, it's been I, it's been a year coming. I've been working Wait, working hard on it. I think we both knew it was coming, right? Like, I've yeah. known for about a year, but just wasn't... Wait, had to wait for official. Yeah, somebody has to give you a piece of paper to make it real. To ma- that way you could actually, you know, get your FMLA from work. Anything right, and all that good away stuff. from it. Exactly. Anyway, back to Yu-Gi-Oh, guys. Back Sorry to Yu-Gi-Oh. about that. Sorry, we just had a moment. You don't usually wind up with, with two dads in that situation on, at a, the on same a stream time. randomly. So similar timing, too. Right. So anyway, back to the Yu-Gi-Oh. We've got the, the Kigari with the Widow Anchor. I think he's got at least spells, three spells in there. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. He's linking away the, uh, the Kigari. Looks like he's getting ready to end his turn, so he's going into Shizuku. He probably wanted to slow grind it. That's probably why he didn't go into Shizuku last turn. Yeah, that, I mean, it makes sense, but that, I don't know, because if he plays Hercules base, he can just put it all back. That's true, but there are times in Yu-Gi-Oh where you've just got to play your game at your pace and not let what your opponent's doing disrupt what you're trying to accomplish. And there's the search. Yep, he's got the afterburner setting it up for next turn. Is it weird that my side deck for my pure Sky Striker variant sides the other two afterburners and like another jamming waves? Not really. I think jamming wave is a really underestimated card right now. I think MST has a lot of uh, preference, 
by players because it's quick play. And it can hit your own field spell. Exactly. But uh, I think that Jamming Wave is a good option because it's so searchable. Yeah, that, that's why I like it. And it's just another Sky Striker card. So, like, if, if needed, it's a Shizuku target. It's a Kagari target. It's a Hayate target. Exactly. It's, it's a target for the deck. Plus, it has the two-for-one benefit. <laughs> exactly. So, we've got... Uh, I'm excited that the Rongo lock got denied because this means that we're in. We're now in a skillful Yu-Gi-Oh game, and and it's Jesus. really going to be tough for uh, the six samurai deck to kind of get it get its legs back underneath it and try to find an alternative win condition. You know, His soul just got veilered. Oof! If he can, hopefully Kevin can get himself into a position maybe where he can he can get some Sheans on the board and maybe start trying to control because Sheehan is such a strong card against Sky Striker. And it's at three now. Exactly. So, you know, if, if he can get a couple Sheehan on the board, you know... He's going to draw some cards. It'll be great. Pot of Greed. I mean, you know, hopefully... That's actually not Pot of Greed. What's a plus two in the game? That's a uh, beginning of the end. Yep. Because this old sent the card. I mean, he didn't have to pay a card at all for that. Yeah, that's awesome. I think that... Um, is that a Soul Charge? I don't see a soul charge. I feel like it was on the far side of his hand there. I must have missed it. Maybe it's a samurai card. It kind of looks like it just, it almost looks like soul charge. I'm hoping it's soul charge. <laughs> I mean, that would be great. Oh, is that another Valor? Did he get double Valor? He did get double Valor. Oh my god, you guys. Two Valors in one turn. That stinks. And now we know why his opening was so weak. Because right? he opened the Oh, hand. there it is. The soul charge. You were right. Here it comes. Soul charge for four. This is why you run Sheehan, and maybe why you should tech in Glow Up Bulb in Six Samurai, so you can run Nat Beasts. Gom. Giggity goo. <laughs> I guess Soul Charge for two, not four, but still, Soul Charge is... Soul Charge is always going to be a power play. <laughs> and then maybe Summon Sorceress, or it looks like he's overlaying. Are we going? Yup. He just he doesn't going even care. Rongo Bongo. All day. Oh, <laughs> savage. Rongo, Rongo locked again. There is nothing that Colby's going to be able to do to wiggle out from underneath this. He, he, he soul charged. He could have made so many combos. And he's like, nah, Rongo you lock. <laughs> you can't play Yu-Gi-Oh anymore. And that's how I think he's only studied that combo in the deck. That's oh, the only reason man. I think that. That is rough. <clears throat> Heroic challenger Rongo Miniad on the field, getting ready to go under for six materials. And that rank three is Widow so Anchor. Good. Wait, 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 wait. The we knew Widow we had anchor. the anchor. I know, but this will interrupt the combo, which can cause a huge problem for him. And he can take control of it. He's got three in there, guys. Double Valor Anchor. Nice. Double Valor and the Widow Anchor to take that monster to prevent Rongo Miniad from getting those much-needed materials. I'm actually surprised he didn't summon his rank three over here where the Shizuku points to as well. He probably wasn't thinking about it. When you're practiced in your combos, you're going to put them where you're used to instead of where the board allows it. And that That's really the difference between the, the higher-skilled practice players. That That's what... 15 hours of test play gets you Very, a yeah. week. I was going to say, that extra, you know, that first, like, 10 hours you play and you learn 80% of the deck, and then it's that, you know, you got to play 20 hours just to learn that extra 5% right, to, interaction. to get that last little interaction down. That's exactly it. Marginal return. I'm wondering what's going on here. Is, is, uh... Is it unaffected by Is that other anger? number Oh, unaffected? he doesn't have three spells in Grave. He doesn't? I don't think he has three spells in Grave. I thought he shuffled. I thought I saw three. I'm very what, what, confused right now. Is that card unaffected? What's going on here? Oh, wait, no, it passed turn. That's why he's at... Okay. Oh, okay. I was like, wait a minute. I, said I was he like, like, why is it back on his He, like, side? immediately ended his turn, I guess. Yep, he was just like, pass. I guess no battle phase answers the question as to right. why. Right, yeah, that, that explains it. I was a bit confused as to what's going on. Okay, so Rongo Lock has been stopped and broken again. Skillful Yu-Gi-Oh, you guys. That's what it comes down to. That's what makes the difference in the game. Uh, he probably shouldn't have gone for the wrong goal lock. I feel that was the wrong play. I agree. He should have made some Sheans and tried to start uh, out grinding him. So, so that was a mistake on his part. And now, now he's got Kagari on the field again, and it's time to start um, setting up to just overwhelm him. 
Uh, at this point... He's still got the field spell, too. Yeah, he's still got the field spell. At this point, I'd say that he probably needs to move into... Um, he needs to get some damage on the board and then move into OTK territory. Um, try to get maybe a Boral Sword or a Phantom Sky Blaster. Depends. There's there's three real versions of, of uh, pure Sky Striker running around right now based off of whether you're playing um, Phantom Sky Blaster, uh, Ibli, or um, some people. Every once in a while you still see somebody trying to play um, Diabolos. I play Diabolos and Sky Blaster. Yeah. I just play the Diabolos just to hit a card in their hand. Exactly. I don't even play it for the 3K beater. I Although I played against AJ on Dueling Book the other day, randomly matched him. And uh, would you believe that he opened Imperial Order every single game, as well as Monster Reborn for the Diabolos? Against AJ? Yes, I believe that. Uh, every time. And I mean, I ended up, he won the first match, I won the second one, but that was just not fun. <laughs> Finale H says he hears a Gurwell. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> this can't be Gurwell, not enough statistics. Being statistics listed. don't prove facts. <laughs> <laughs> One of my friends said that, and I was just baffled. I was like, what? They don't necessarily prove, like, 100% objective fact, but they prove, like, what we consider fact. Right. You know, statistics. So Kitten Feathers in the chat saying that uh, he doesn't believe that the uh, Rongo Miniad Turbo decks run Shein. That's a huge mistake if that's the case. They should at least play one, right? Yeah, like, do the they just very have least. Room? I don't. I don't know why you wouldn't have room. I would make it if you're trying to turbo Rongo and you need to back up. I, w- I would say that you need Shein. How could you not? It's. I, I mean, it's just a card that I can't see myself not playing unless I needed all my cards for my combo, like in Goki. It's really hard right. to cut I mean, anything. I mean, between Shein and Nat Beast, you have the ability to outgrind other grind decks if you lose the Rongo Turbo. The Rongo Turbo is really only there to, to stop the to stop the Turn Goki. lock. Yeah. And it's only, what, that. three extra deck cards sold, which you already play. Right. The I can't think of the number guy yeah, name right now. I don't remember his name. And then name. the Rongo. 89% of statistics are made up, but 143% of girl statistics are made up. Man, we're getting some hate in the announcers. Yeah, there was a point like four years ago when I got very obsessed with statistics in the game and talking about why you had to play three upstart and why you had to be smart, and that's where they're going at with this is the fact that I was talking Your so past many is stati- haunting you? Yeah, my past still haunts me. My friend, true friends don't let you live it down. That's true. <laughs> Just don't. That's an absolute fact right there. <laughs> and we just seeing, we're just seeing Colby come out and pick that board apart now. He's putting damage on the field. Uh, he's got probably three or four spells in there right now, pumping up the power of Kagari. I think he's gone through what? This is his second or third Kagari. Oh, what's up, Cody? So he's he's starting to run out of run out of options here. We don't want to see. He do, he doesn't want to burn through all his Sky Striker cards. Just yet, but it looks like he is going to go into Shizuku. I hope he plays Hercules base, because if he does, he's going to grind this out. He's going to just win off grind. A lot of people don't understand the power of Hercules base, um, but it's one of those it's one of those cards in the deck that really just allows you to do so much more. It's a great one of I even play it in my invoked version sometimes yeah, if I'm playing more Sky Striker cards. I've been seeing some people teching in Hercules base and Ego Booster at one, and it just... Every time I hear about it, people say it makes a difference. There There's it is. The, there it is. There's the Hercules base. And the Eagle Booster is like almost game versus Paleo. Exactly. Like, like that's why it's so good versus those like just the non-meta deck. Like right. I say non-meta, but the, the road. not what we even even Alter Geist is yeah. decent against. But well, just, I mean, Alter Geist is still technically meta. That's tier one. It's just it's just good against the decks that aren't Goki or Sky Striker. Right. <laughs> like it's just really good against them, and it's decent versus those decks. Exactly, and so. We're seeing. We're gonna see. Another smoke signal dojo. Yep. We'll see what we'll see what Spooner puts out, and hopefully he'll be able to to gather himself up. But this this grind game is really going. And um, and what's he? What did he search for? I, I missed the uh, search. The, the red guy. Right. Red blue. Is he gonna red blue lock you? Well, because he's got Shizuku, he's got Area Zero. We know one of those sets is a Widow Anchor. Are both Widow Anchor? Uh. I doubt it. I doubt it as well. One's probably an impermanence. Yeah, something to negate in a corner. I would. This is still game one, right? This is still game one. We are in a grind game. When the when the Rongo lock failed, there's the Widow Anchor. And nope, the Widow that goes Anchor to him. Take it. I'll hold on to that. Thanks for playing. And I, and unfortunately, Samurai is just kind of go. Hmm. I. All right. What do I do now? 
he could send Dojo if he plays the level one green guy, which we know he does from round one. He could send Dojo to special that, assuming it's still in deck, and then he could, you know, special some guys from hand probably. Looks like that might be what he's doing. I, I don't know the rest of his hand, but assuming he has like a Kazan or something, he can extend. Right here we go. Fuma, that's what yep, his name Fuma. is. I was like, what's the name? Level Shadow, one green guy. Shadow six samurai Fuma. That was used a lot in um, in the Draco Six Sam deck that was running around right at the end of December, early January With before the True Kings. Yeah, before before people realized that uh, <laughs> that Amano Iwato was a card. I love you, Amano Iwato. You yeah. were our savior. <laughs> Shocky Rocky saved us from the uh, from pendulums. I love how he just kind of fell off the map too now. It's just like, you see him every now and then on like a deck list, but he's not as prevalent as he was. Yeah, there's a lot of debate among true Draco players uh, as to the ratios of Ignis to Majesty Maiden, whether to run a mono or called by, or maybe two of each. And then a lot, some people have been kind of leaning into border a little bit. Um, I do just like going on. Looks like we're scooping uh, a samurai player. I assume scoops that one. Yeah, is what I'm not thinks. sure. We're going to go ahead and verify Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Alex did win that one. Sky Strikers take game yep. one. So we proceed to scoop phase, and hopefully, uh, I'm sure that uh, that Alex is thinking, okay, what's my strategy here? Do I just double down on Rongo Turbo? I'd love to know what's in his side deck because I feel like in some decks in the current meta game, the way you've got to look at it is um, they didn't give us that. I was checking to see because I saw that they printed it on the deck list. 92 papers. is back, but 93 is still in the Shadow Realm, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is Moltres Day. That was one reason I almost didn't want to come to the regional in general. What's Moltres Day? I don't play Pokemon. Pokemon Go. Moltres is available like as a raid. Oh, okay. that's, that's what I call them. I don't know if that's what they're actually called. Yeah. But a bunch of my friends are very into it, and I just almost wanted to just go just to, just to go catch Moltres. I see. I see what you're saying. But... And yeah, no, I remember Sam's during True King. They were in, in they, just like Brady said, there was like Link Spam plus VFD. And right. you're just like, what do I do? But now VFD is kind of, you know, Alan said it perfectly in one of his Blue Eyes deck profiles recently. He's like, you know, VFD isn't as good turn one. People gamma it. <laughs> yep. It's just so true. Yeah, getting gamma or ghost ogred, like, that's just so rough. I mean, at least the, if you ghost ogre it, it at least resolves and you kind of. You still delay them a turn. But if they gamma it, then they also make an Omega. Right. <laughs> and then oh, they rip man. a card, and then they uh, do their stuff. And then they go into their board. <laughs> they still have five so cards. Rough. A second account. See? that's I knew you were grinding Pokemon Go like crazy, man. I need to do it. Yeah, I don't uh, play Pokemon Go. So. I played it for like three months, and then I randomly sign in on my phone and like catch Pokemon. Right. But... You know, with me actually going out jogging a lot more lately and, like, working out, I'm actually around the city a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So I uh, very easily could go and catch Pokemon while I'm doing that now. So while they're shuffling, let's see if there's any, uh, anybody at the top tables that we're recognizing right now. The top ten tables, we've got uh, Kansas City's own Tyler Dugan's at table ten playing Lucas Pestle. Uh, looking at names. I don't see anybody else that we know... Trenton Smith is at table four, playing Daryl Manaback. Cam Baracco and Daniel Scott are playing at table 13. Tom Sherrard's at table 11. Walker Cosgrove's at table 21 against James Sled. Wise Guys Armin is at table 15, playing against Fabio. Yeah, there we go. Kansas City matchup. Um, Wise Guys member Christopher Rice is at table 27 against Christopher Hughes. That's Panda Man. Yeah, we got we got some good matchups going on right now, guys, at other tables. Unfortunately, we can't bring those to Josh you. Josh Foster won round one. He's at table 33, so I guess he won't be joining us at table three. Right, you know, unless he, he scrubs out for the rest of the game. Table <laughs> seven is going to time. Ooh, interesting. Sebastian Till, or Till, and... We got Johnny Ray Wynn, Chandler. Asian Persuasion, at table 42. Looks like he won his first round, and he's playing Ethan... Uh, McGrannanan 
Oh, whose name I do not recognize. Uh, table 12 is Tom Sherrard. Table 12 is Tom Sherrard. And he's slow. He's calling him Slow Play Tom. He does play a little slow sometimes. Table 12, I'm seeing Michael Burback versus Kenneth Brown Jr. Ah, table 11, I was misreading. Table okay, 11. Yeah. But versus, yeah. Versus Jacob Miller out of Kansas. Let's see. Like, I'm going to check and see where my boy is. My boy playing my deck today. Looks like he lost. Matt Roberts lost. He's at table 90 right now. I'm going to go grab a drink really quick. 89. Yep, you go do that. I'll, I'll take care of this. You watch the fourth for a minute. Yep, I will handle it. We are already into the second match of round one. Alex Colby playing Sky Striker versus Kevin Spooner playing Six Samurai. Looks like he's using that token. I'm curious as to why he sent it to the grave because tokens don't go to the grave. But he is, uh, he's already got the multi-roll. He's going into Kigari. He's going to use that Kigari almost certainly to get back the drones. Although, maybe it looks like he grabbed Engage instead. I'm still wondering why that token is in the graveyard. But uh, the six Samurai got, got stopped short. Looks like he didn't have the gas in the tank to make Rongo Miniad. What's going on here? Let's see here. Aunt Lizm saying Colby's just nervous because he's on stream. That's fine. No big deal. I'll probably just casually remind him real quick. So yeah, just cleared that out there, especially since I'm sure he'll use them again later. But um, yep, we've still got some play going on. Looks like he's ashing. Using Ash Blossom to stop a draw that I missed. Probably something, some interaction off of Hayate. Um, I don't know why I'm still seeing it in hand. I'm a little bit confused as to what's going on at this exact second. So, we're letting these players do the best. We have a standing, uh, standing rule that we're not allowed to interfere with the games. I just wanted to poke my head out there and remind him about the token in the grave. Looks like he's sending a uh, shark cannon to the grave. And he has got, it looks like, two spells in the grave. Using the engage. He'd probably be searching for an afterburner at this point, I imagine. Or a Widow Anchor, something he can play as an opponent's turn for interruption. Yep, there it is. So that Widow Anchor, once it hits the field, will be a really useful resource. Not using any dice to keep track of the number of cards on multi-roll, but um, he will, chances are, um, have two or three on it at the end. So there he is. He's setting that Widow Anchor that he searched off of the Engage. Setting another card. I'm not sure which one's which, but one of them is almost certainly the Widow Anchor that he, he tutored out. And now the question is, yep, he's going to go ahead and link out probably into Shizuku for the end phase search. And he's probably not going to use multi-roll because he's going to want to keep as many spells as he can in the graveyard. <coughs> There's the Ash Blossom. Did they just say he can't Ash due to multi-roll? Did we catch all this? Um, he did not say that he couldn't Ash due to multi-roll. But he is multi-rolling. Getting the two, mm -hmm. sitting back. Um, I'm saying that Sam's pointing out that he wasn't able to ash due to multi-roll. Like, whatever he ashed. Unfortunately, he whatever ashed. he ashed, we, we can't interfere in the game state. It's up to the two players at the table or a judge to straighten that out. Um, one of them has to call a judge for a ruling. Uh, we cannot make rulings, however. We're allowed to go grab a judge, but at this point it's already so far past. Right, you know, and like I said, me poking out my head and saying you can't send token to the grave, that's that's really, it doesn't interfere with the game state at all. Tried to ash and damn it. So he's gone into the Isold, and we're going to see if he can, uh, he, he's probably going to uh, attempt to um, go into Rongo. This is where we're probably going to see the Widow Anchor flipped to negate. 
Yep, there it is. That'll stop him from plussing. And definitely, uh, definitely put a, a, a damper on uh, that attempt. So, we know that he's got a bunch of cards back there now. So now we've gone into Fuma. It looks like basically he's making his scramble plays uh -oh. at this point. Since he knows he can't go into Rongo Miniad. Yep, he's in the battle phase attacking. Alex checking his, his uh, back row. We know what you got back there, buddy. Right. <laughs> Fuma. Fuma goes. And we're going to see what's going on. 13 minutes left in the round when I came in here, so we're probably down to about 10 minutes left. Yeah. This is still game two. Kevin, Kevin can see that clock, and he's probably starting to get a little nervous. Um at best, at this point, he's probably thinking to himself, how can I force a draw? I know that if I was in his shoes, I would probably be contemplating roughly the same thing. Because I'd rather get one point than zero points any day of the week, even though draws are terrible for top cut. Um, I'll do anything to not lose after a certain point. But chances are I wouldn't be playing. I wouldn't be playing... Six Hammer against Sky Striker. Yep, nope. If I had played today, I would have played pure Sky Striker. Gokies did not do me very well. Yep. While I acknowledge the power of the deck, only I will open Triple Instant Fusion Rematch Soul Charge at the UDS. Oh, Lord have mercy. With one rematch in deck. Oh, wow, that's just terrible. Yeah. Then the next again, game two, it was double Instant Fusion, double called by the Grave Rematch. Wow. So, yeah, you tell me... About statistics. I think that the cosmos <laughs> is trying to tell you to... <laughs> don't to, play this deck. <laughs> don't play this deck. That's terrible. Yep. I mean, yep. I was at the UDS playing against pure... I was playing against Sky Striker, and uh, in round two of the UDS tournament, I was playing my Odd Eyes Electromite Turbo, and I had that game on lockdown. He, uh, he, he had me in an awkward position for a few rounds, but I was like, he can't kill me in one turn so i'm gonna keep playing and i picked his board apart I, I put some damage on and we were getting ready to go into time i had 6700 life points and he had a thousand he drew his card stand by in the main i was like sure then time gets called and it's like well go ahead and play it out so he buries a metal foes fusion shuffles and draws and he has this weird look on his face and i'm like what's going on and he's like i was like you got anything and he's, he plays Slash Draw. One, two, three, four, five. Top card, Slash Draw. He hits me for 8,000 damage in main phase one in time. And that's how I lost the giant card tournament. <laughs> yep, Slash Draw for 8k to the dome. I know. I would laugh about it too, my man. I would laugh about it too. That's, yeah, no, that is a uh, that is a sign, my friend. Right, that, that is was a sign. Terrible. I wasn't even mad. Like the way he, like the look on his face when he saw that second slash draw. He looked at me. He looked at the card. And he was like, and I looked at him, and I was just like, well, yeah. I guess you got it. <laughs> it's like if somebody activates Berserker Soul on you to win the game or something, and you're like, yeah, I guess. I just got killed by the heart of the card. <laughs> Can't you be guys. mad by you. You drew seven monsters. It I, happened. I got killed by heart of the card. Monster Donald. Oh man. So we've got uh, we've still we're still grinding it out. He's got his Water Six Samurai on the board. Colby's got Kigari and Multi Roll searching off of an engage. We know that he just added a. Um, he just added an afterburner. Now he's grabbed a widow anchor, and I don't see. I don't. I don't see this ending well. I'm not sure what the life point total is right now, but I know for certain that Colt Alex is Alex is just going to grind his way to victory almost assuredly at this point. 
I think Kevin has maybe two cards in hand, it looks like. Uh, I don't see how. And the Hercules base to draw a card when he kills it by battle. Yep. Hercules base, man, doing work. Did he not add a counter to his multi-roll? Uh, he's keeping track of multi-roll in his head, I guess, because I haven't seen any counters. I saw a Ghost Ogre in his hand, so that's a really bad situation for him to be in. He's got like five cards in, five spell cards in grave right now. So, yep, there goes his his Shadow Six Sam. Draw a card. And he, yeah, Alex has what five, six cards in his hand right now. the The difference in resources available to each player is is enormous. There's the area zero. <laughs> At this point, he'll probably normal summon his Ray. No, I would just pop the Hercules base. Yeah, you think so? I'd just put my cards back. Yep, it looks like he's... Oh, he popped the... Oh, wait, no, he's linking it. Interesting. All right, well, now... I guess he's not going to use the areas here. How many cards does he have left in deck is the real question. Maybe he just feels he doesn't have enough resources left. I mean, when you can set four and you're going to... Wait, did he not Hercules base shuffle back? There's the Ash. Did he not... Did he not Hercules base shuffle back? I did not see Hercules base shuffle back. <gasps> what? What? I don't know. Did he do what? I mean, he has so many more resources than he does already, but... Why? <laughs> this is looking rough. I don't see how Kevin comes out of this situation at this point. I, I mean, I don't either. It's just so... It, it's, like you said, it's night and day difference in terms of the resource game. And I mean, yep, there he is. You got two cards in hand. Like, what's what that you... one card? Is Soul Charge, which it's not. It looks like it's Broken Bam or Golden Bamboo Sword. Yeah, he just set one pass. That, That's... Ja that looks like it's Golden Bamboo Sword or Gateway. Yeah, that that set one pass is a sign of a desperate dying man. <laughs> uh, I, I really don't know what he's trying to do at this point. Well, first we're gonna activate Change of Heart. We're gonna oh my steal God. that monster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's savage. Hercules has to be destroyed. To, oh, duh. For some reason I thought it had to go to the grave. Way to go, Sam. Way to know the card effect. <laughs> well, then, yeah, he should have field spell hit the Hercules base first. Got a lot of people in the chat. Welcome, everybody. One of them is me. Welcome, Ian. Thanks yeah. for joining the chat, man. No problem. You really know, appreciate it. I like being able to have it right here in my hand and my phone. It makes it managing it a little bit easier for me since I'm so blind. I literally, everything is fuzzy on that screen over there. It all looks good to me. So what I'm hoping is if one of these rounds goes super quick, maybe we can get some goat games in an exhibition out there. Yeah, that Everybody would be cool. Everybody likes to watch goat. Looks like the game's been decided. Probably get Aaron to play somebody out there. He has two really hollowed out goat decks. Something yeah, Japan. Aaron. Yeah, Aaron's playing a lot of goat format. It's like all he wants to do lately. Well, you know. And it looks like Alex took that one in style. Kevin's undefeated streak and coming to an end really quick. That Rongo Bongo getting shut down too early. Samurais could have played Aqua Dolphin to get rid of hand traps. Brady was pointing it out. He's like, the way that deck works is you just, you know, you spam to the board. So I don't know why the guy's not extending. You just want to drop everything as quick as you can. Yeah, that's true. You definitely need to be able to uh, to come back. I guess uh, I guess Kevin should not have played on his own mat. <laughs> that was the luck. Yep, he, he, he covered up the, the luck of the source of the collector's cash mat. So you guys saw it here on the live stream, yo. Don't uh, don't play on anything other than a collector's cash game mat at the feature table because that's where all the luck comes from. So they're clearing out on the feature table. Uh, I'm pretty sure that we're probably close to time, but we're gonna come ahead, come back here into the commentary booth. And uh, man, that was uh, that was a really big flip of the script from the first round for sure. We saw the Rongo Mini lock just shut the game off in like the first. 10, 15 minutes, the round was over. But this time around, um, we had some skillful Yu-Gi-Oh going on. And unfortunately, uh, 
Sky the Rondo Striker lock wins. didn't work, and Sky Striker took the win, you guys. So there you have it. That's another great example of you know the the methodology in this current format. It's really just degenerate kind of uh, lockdown deck versus grinding decks. And if the high skill grind player is able to interrupt your ability to create your degenerate lockdown, he turns it into a grind game and he wins. That is true, and yeah, you shut down that Rongo, Sky Strikers definitely win that grind game. Yeah, for just, sure. They're just, just they're the best resource grind deck in the current metagame. Uh, I, I think they're even better at it than Draco, honestly. Draco, Draco is good in the grind because it can rely on Floodgates, but in terms of resource management, nothing is better than Sky Striker. And in theory, Sky Strikers could use Floodgates if they wanted to, but they'd have to use, like, the Floodgate monsters probably more than yeah. anything. Because they could remove their own monsters with, like, multi-roll exactly. or with something. But they could rely on those. Rather than relying on, like, Widow Anchor to disrupt on their opponent's turn, mm -hmm. they could, like, rely on, like, a Floodgate monster. In theory. Right, like, yeah. Whether or not that's actually good... Mm. And that's another debatable, day. right? Because you don't I could want technically main... Hornet drones summon Vanity Fiend pass. Right, exactly. And I know that there was some early experimentation with the Yosenjus in Sky Striker to create a, a uh, an OTK variant. See, that's actually pretty interesting. I remember that being a thing with like when Demise first came out too. Demise Yosenjus was extremely relevant yep. because you'd summon, summon, summon Demise, draw your cards, mm -hmm. end phase, resolve Demise, bounce, bounce, bounce. Yeah, no, uh, one of the early experimental decks that I saw going around was a Yosenju Sky Striker deck that was just basically, um, you know, summon your Ray or your Hornet Drone, create Kigari, you know, like, and just play play all your spells, and then you end by summon, 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 and then you end your turn, and you resolve them back to your hand. You could do it with Demise, or when you wanted to OTK, you'd get what you needed to on the board, you'd use your spells like your an your Anchor and all that other stuff, and then you'd summon the Yosenjus, one, two, three, and then swing for game. It's a pretty interesting take, yep. actually. I can see why it didn't necessarily take off. Right, exactly. I can see why it also hit the someone's mind, and they're like, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this I has can... some synergy. I was like, wait a second, you mean I can summon all these monsters to my main monster zones after I've used all my spells that get advantage by not having those there, and then I clear the field and I'm able to do it again next turn? Hmm. Hmm. And I have a guy that goes, I'm going to bounce your guy. Exactly. that's how it ends. I'm going to bounce your guy. Yep. Wait a minute. The Ibley version is the best one. I mean, there's a lot of debate going on, and when you get the Ibley, chances are you won already. Ibley's kind of, you know, the, the argument that I've heard is that Ibley's kind of a win more card, honestly. See, I haven't I haven't paid enough attention to the arguments yep. about Ibley, because I just assumed that Sky Blaster was the better card. I, but I, I've personally not, not tried the Ibley version out yet, yep. and I haven't read any of the theory on it. Uh, you know, I'm not a Sky Blaster, or uh, I'm, I'm not a Sky Striker player, but from what I've understood, a lot of people complain about Ibley being uh, difficult to get to. And then even when you do get her, chances are you're already so ahead that you don't need her anyway. Thoughts, chat? Anybody care to explain why Ibley is the better version? I'd love to hear the thoughts of the chat as well. We have a lot of discussion on this subject, particularly in the Team Wise Guys chat. And uh, there's a lot of players here today repping... Uh, Greg Farley is playing Sky Striker. Chris Rice is also playing Sky Striker. I know both of those two are uh, they're always at the forefront. Um, Matthias Ichi out in Sweden, one of our players uh, across the uh, across the ocean in Europe. He plays Sky Striker a lot, and between the three of them, there's a lot of theory chat on Sky Striker that I get to I get to look at and I read. And I remember some of it, and the rest of it's just like I'm sorry I play Pendulum. It's gone to the back of my cerebral cortex. It doesn't talk about how Joker's getting unbanned. Oh my God! <laughs> if Joker, look, I you don't have to give me Astrograph. You don't have to give me. You don't have to give me double iris. Just give me Joker. No, 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 no. I, I want plush fire. I mean, I would love all of those things. But if can I could I have one of them, I would take Joker. Give me plush fire, luster, and Draco face off to three, and you can leave everything else banned. I mean, I accidentally let my wife become a fluffle player, so all I hear about is if I just had patchwork. We're not getting patchwork. We're anymore. never getting patchwork. And we could have it now. Like, it's, it's not even that like, good. Seriously. It's, it's, it's don't tell that to a Fluffle player. They're like... They're like, no, bro, that'll make my deck tier like, what one. Do you, mean? you don't exactly. even know. You, have you, no you, you don't even know. Like, what are you going to do when you're facing down my two saber tooths and my kraken? What are you going to do? And I'm just going to be like, uh, a chew. 
<laughs> like, because all the best decks just will sneeze and they'll do that same thing. Exactly. That's like the analogy one of my friends always gives me. He's like, Gerwell, when you're not playing the tier one deck, we're doing all these hardcore things in order to make, like, Stardust Dragon Draco Sack, and we're, like, committing, like, four cards, and we have to play perfectly. And then the best deck just goes, Achoo! Oh, sorry, I got, I got rid of it, and now I have a Stardust Draco Sack and five cards in hand. Yep. You're right. Best deck. <laughs> that is the difference between the top decks and the rogue options right now. It's that's like, why man, Magicians I... is still better than Odd Eyes. I mean, I know it. I'll say it. All right. We're getting our explanation here. So, version technically has a U-lock and tons of free OTKs, so you can easily make an OTK with just drones. There's not a single reason to not play Ibly because if you draw it, you also win. You summon it off Mermaid and then Akashic bounce it for the normal summon. So, you activate drones. You go into, like... Phoenix or Cerebus into Mermaid, discard to special the Ibli, and then... Yeah, you've got to link up to and, link down. And then you make a Kashik with the Mermaid and the Ibli. Yep. Wait, no. No, it's the other way around. How do you bounce it back? You get the Ibli on the field first. I'm so confused. See, you're not explaining the combo to me, so I don't understand. I'm not smart. Okay, I'm, I'm a smart yeah, player. You got to link up. It. You got to link up to a nightmare to link down to the mermaid. Yeah, and then mermaid special the Ibli. Mermaid specials Ibli. And then how do you make the Akashic to bounce it back? You need to have another nightmare on the field. Yeah. Because you need to have two fiends to make Akashic. And it, yeah, because Ibli is a Cybers, right? See? No, Ibli is a fiend. I think. I don't know anymore. I don't. I don't understand this world. I don't, I don't know either. Um, I play Pendulums. I mean, I used to play Blue Eyes, so like, what the heck do I even know? Well, I used to play Heroes. That was my first top eight ever. Right. Ibli is a Cybers. Oh, is it? I thought so. Okay. He's going to text me the video of it. All right, that works. We'll watch it, and maybe we'll understand. But maybe, maybe we'll still be confused. Maybe all of a sudden... You know what? All I know is I saw a Pendulum Magician's Extra Link combo last night, and that is the most disgusting, g degenerate thing in the world, because do you know how easy it is? It's a two-card combo. Go on. It's You're talking to somebody who played Pendulums forever, so I'm in love with them just as much as you are. I mean, it's it's literally the same as making the Triff Pendulum board, only you go into Enlightenment Paladin and Beatrice. Oh, Enlightenment Paladin? You mean my favorite synchro monster in the game? You use Beatrice to send Soul Charge, and you make Enlightenment Paladin to yep, get it back. Uh, this all sounds like a great combo. And, and you then, know how to make Beatrice off one card? Yeah. Vision Hero of Ion. Yeah. I just fell in love again. Magician Extra Link. I'll say yeah. I put the, I posted the video in the chat last night. I'll have to go scroll through it. Yeah, no, I was watching it and they did it flawlessly every time. I was like, oh god, what has happened? You just need to, you just need like a chronograph and a jackal. The end of the if you have mythical beast Cerberus and chronograph sorcerer, you basically have an extra link. Which, when you think about it, is like how, but. You just use Harmonizing and another Magician to make Enlightenment Paladin, and it's like, whoop, I got it. This guy's showing us the combo here. So Hornet Drones, Kagari. All right, I'm finding out this video combo here really We're going to figure it out, you guys. But, yeah, no, for real. Please don't play Pendulum Extra Link. I know that I'm not going to. Oh, I'm going to. Okay, I'm going to totally buy up the rest of the cards <laughs> I need to do it. I make bad choices. I want, I want my invite. <laughs> Unless they ban Firewall. I'll theory problem. this with you. We'll at least get invites with Right, with okay. The deck. We'll do this. Pendulum My goal is always to top eight, but we'll at least get invites out of it. Right, <laughs> seriously. Playing Pendulum Extra Link. I don't think I... Oh, that's goblin. how. You make Double Mermaid. Oh, uh, Double Mermaid. You go Mermaid into Ibli. Special the Ibli to their side. Well, so Mermaid into Ibli. Ibli into Mermaid. Link the two mermaids for Akashic. A cat, and then give them the Ibli. At. How did we not see it? <laughs> you needed two mermaids. Two mermaids. That answers everything. <laughs> that that answers my combo. Then you bounce the mermaid. You normal summon the mermaid to special the Cerebus. I hate the nightmares. They're the worst archetype that was ever released in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. They're literally the only way to do the extra link is the nightmares. It's that goblin extra normal that ruins it for everybody. I 
have two. I didn't get my coffee this morning, so I'm using Mountain Dew to substitute you guys. I'm going to have my first soda in a while today when they give us lunch. Ooh, boy, I'm looking forward to that pizza. I am looking forward to some pizza, too. Okay, I get the combo now. Now it makes sense. It's still degenerate, and you should feel bad for having come up with it. Oh, boy. Greg's on the feature? We got Greg Farley from the Wise Guys on the feature table. Versus, who is that? I don't know. Property. My girlfriend made me breakfast this morning. Isn't she beautiful? You can't say that out loud. I get it. You have a wife. No I could totally say it. Nope, I can't. I can't. <laughs> My wife would probably say the same thing. Well, way to go. What a champion. Thank you, Lloyd. You're the best. We got Greg Farley versus Jeremiah Hooglut. Jeremiah who glute? Let's butcher their names. All right, let's make sure that every time somebody misplays, we yell something. Who glute? Anybody else at the top? Johnny Nugent is at uh, Asian Persuasion top four. We don't know what deck he's playing yet. I'll be right back. Devin Bannum at table two. Who is ready for the game, guys? Invoked Mech Knight. So this will be a really great, skillful Yu-Gi-Oh match, you guys. I'm really excited for this. Um, where is uh, Cam Brocco at right now? Uh, table 28 with only three points, so he lost. Wow, Cambraco lost already, guys. So, looks like he, unless we have some more losers happening, um, we are we are not getting the four-peat. We got Akeem at table 19. Team KNG versus Team Wise Guys, Chris Rice. So, that's going to be a Sky Striker mirror. What else have we got going on here? Tyler Dugan is playing at table 3. What else? Trenton Smith is playing at table six. Looks like he's still undefeated. And there will be a lunch break after this round, they said. Armin is at table 11 versus Dawson Selders. Both of them are undefeated, so we got a couple couple undefeated wise guys going on right now. This will be great. What else? Dawson Selders. That's Colby. Colby, yep. Colby Selders. Colby's playing his uh, Alter Guys deck more than likely. I think, Armin. Armin, I think Armin's playing... Uh, Invoke Mech, Knight, Invoke Mech Knight Sky Striker. See, I feel like I'm the reason that Kansas City got behind the Invoked Mech Knight deck ever since the New Year's tournament. Yeah. I feel like that. I feel like I have caught because I remember like two weeks later after I won the Invoke or won the New Year's Day tournament with Fairy Tail Luna and Double Summon in my Invoke deck. Two weeks later, Armin was playing the exact same deck. <laughs> Like I know, this. I remember when you took it up. Hey, look, uh, Alan Nails is here at the tournament. He is playing Blue Eyes at table 57 against Andrew Voles. I miss Fairy Tale Luna. That card's great. Oh, my God, right? I want Kieran back. Kieran's Bouncing. not that broken Oh, anymore. my God, Kieran. I would love Kieran. Give me Kieran back, Give please. me Kieran back. At pendulums have already been wrecked so Give me bad. Kieran at one so I can put it as my Magispector engine in my Pendulum. Oh, my gosh. That would go fire. Never mind. They're not going to give it back. No, Although, no, in your Pendulum, so in Magicians, you could play Fairy Tail Luna as your normal summon engine because you basically end in double Kieran. Yep. Because you go normal summon Luna, search Luna, Pendulum out the other Luna. That's pretty right. good, honestly. <laughs> Cookies at table 85 with zero wins. Tables 91, 92, and 93 are in the Shadow Realm this round. Now 91 is gone 91 and 92 disappeared again. That's rough, you guys. Oof, how'd that happen? Why are they telling us bye? I don't know. It looks like one of my little homies is at one of those tables because I'm not seeing his name. Unless he got moved up a lot for having one around. Invoked Mech Knight versus Sky Striker. I need to know how he's doing. <clears throat> Greg opened it up with Hornet Drones into Kagari. Into Shizuku. Passing and the Ash on the Shizuku, I assume. Yep. So now we've got Hornet Drones. 
double, double horn and drones going, going straight into day. Invoker. Nope. No, but I would I would make a Soul Day and search BLS. He's playing Invoke Mech Knight. Yeah, I would make a Soul Day and search BLS. I I, I tested that for a little while. It yeah. was fun. <laughs> Anytime you had double And the mind oh control. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's going to go make a Link 3. No, no, no. He's, well, yes. But he's going to make the, the Alistair first for sure. Oh, man, that is savage. Oh, what a great play. Greg is in trouble right off the bat. And no spell, no, only one spell in Grave. So if he has Widow Anchor set, he is, hopefully Jeremiah is smart and summons to the far monster zone. Right. Away from those and doesn't walk into an impermanence. I mean, the impermanence is still there regardless, but. Terraforming. And now discard. Discarding the terraforming. He's in Nightmare Phoenix. That's an interesting choice. He I think that that was anchor. probably the right choice. Well, he chained the anchor to negate it. Well, uh, there's a waste. It just might as well have baited the anchor. So now he's going into the link two. Now we're going to see the invoker. I wonder what the other set card um, is. You yeah. see shared ride in Greg's hand. You see engage, which I'm yep, pretty sure. There's Alistair, invoker of madness, and the terraforming. Oh, shared yeah, ride. Open double shared ride. So shared ride is... Going to be a, a necessary evil here. Do you just... Greg's going to get a lot of advantage off of this, so... Do, do you just push and game him? He has game. All he has to do is summon Alistair, search, get the invocation, and then do the one extra search. So he's only going to give Greg two more cards. No, he, he can double Mechaba. Well, no, he, or no, can, he, he can't can, double Mechaba. No. Game. He can make Magellancia if he plays it and just game him. Yeah, you're, I think you're right. I am right. If he if he plays the Magellancia, it's worth giving Greg the two cards. He gives him the one for Invocation. Well, he can make Purgatrio and who else? I mean, I don't think there's any Earth monsters he can use. You just book a law into it. That's if he has Book of Law. Oh, well, he can search Book of Law off the effect of Madness Invoker. Oh, yes. you're so right. So I would, just, I would just go for the kill shot, personally. That's, yeah, I mean, assuming he's running Magellanica off the Book of Law... Otherwise, I would be making Purgatrio, and then maybe... Oh, looks like you made yep, Purgatrio. Yep, there's the Purgatrio. Now he's going to recur. And then you activate Invocation to add back the Alistair. And you... Oh, does he not have another card in hand? He's already... That is the... Inv that's the Alistair that he just brought back. So he but did he, not search the he book. He hasn't searched the... He the, had game! If he had I'm, one more I card. have no idea what he's doing right now. He has to use the effect. That's a mandatory effect. No, it's not. It's not? Optional. Wow, why wouldn't he do that? Well, theoretically, when it was summoned, he had no cards in hand. So he couldn't discard. Oh, yeah, it. he's got a discard for that effect. Yeah, that's the negative. So that's too. why. Well, yeah, Round three also. Oh, wow, I haven't changed that at all. My bad, you guys. I didn't even notice it. Well, now it makes sense, but I'm like, man, you had the kill shot. Now, dude, Greg has so much advantage back. To yeah, that shared ride game. was a necessary evil. So if there's I, area zero. He's got the multi-roll on the field. Yeah, this is a bad situation for him to be in. If I had looked at his hand, I would have I would have never activated the meltdown after terraforming. If I had known he didn't have the ability to do the combo. Because otherwise, yeah, I'd have just pushed through it. Because you go attack for the 23, attack for the 18. That's 41. And then you book a law into Magellancia. You discard Alistair on Magellancia to boost it to 4,000. Attack, that's 8,100. Yep. But he can't but he do needed, it. He just needed one more card in order to be able to do it. One Unfortunately, he didn't get it, though. So that that's... And the fact that Greg got all that advantage... I mean, Shared Dried was great. I, I feel like Jeremiah did a great job outing the board that Greg had set up. But if, if that Shared Ride hadn't been set, this would be kind of a different scenario. But that Shared Ride off of all that advantage... And really, if I was Greg, I wouldn't have widow anchored. I wouldn't have widow anchored the Phoenix. I would have just chained the shared ride and been like, "Yeah, now you're like, yeah, you lose the shared ride, but it forced Jeremiah might have just had to stop at Phoenix. Yep, like he would have just had to stop. And there's the afterburner. He's gonna destroy Purgatrio. Nothing he can do. But it about worked out. It. In, it worked out in Greg's favor dramatically because then <clears throat> you know he got the he got the one for one off the terraforming. So I mean, it did. It worked out perfectly. Yep. I'm going to peek my head out at the higher table see where my, my deck is at.
Oh man. So while he disappeared, I, sorry guys, I just kind of spaced out here because Greg has so much advantage at this point. There's just no, it's impossible for him to lose this game in my opinion. In order for Jeremiah to like win this game, he has to like top deck into like desires and like everything. <laughs> like, I don't have an answer for you there. Okay. And sorry Greg guys. has another shared ride. Like no, there's just this game's over. We're going to game two. Greg's definitely winning game one. So good news is my little homie Matt Roberts from Leavenworth won last round with my Odd Eyes deck. So he is actually at table thirty-seven. Did he use Odd Eyes Fusion? Uh, I do not run Odd Eyes Fusion in that deck. The only way I get to Vortex Dragon in it is with uh, Absolute Dragon because I I I have the Electromite Turbo set up to where I can do three Electromites before I Pendulum Summon. So I make Firewall, Griffin, Vortex Dragon, and a Negation. Yeah, well, let's find a way to go abuse the Ritual Monster. I actually have a deck like that already. Yeah. So far, not great. <laughs> it's such a good card when I read it to it. Like, I know. It's so good. Har I just Har abuse Harpy's it. Feather, Churnade, and then you pay 500 every time. If they had, if one day of peace was at three, that deck would be so much better. Because you have to pay instead of you dealing damage. So with one day apiece, you still have your opponent paying life points. And you take zero. And you take nothing. That so you sit there under Gravity Dragon and uh, Chain Energy, and you just sit there and you watch them burn themselves to death. Greg has won this game. Not yeah. even a thought in my mind about it. Oh, I absolutely agree. There's really nothing that he can do to come back at this point. He's going to Widow Anchor. The No, that doesn't go to Grave, bro. That, that goes to his side of the field. Unless he, he took a bunch of stuff out grave. Yeah, he multi-rolled for four. <laughs> so. Oh, jeez. Yeah, sorry I missed that chat. I just had to make sure. I've actually got several little homies from, from Mountain Leavenworth here today, so I'm really excited. I have to catch up with all of them. Trying to help build up locals in different areas, so I've been going out there lately. The Kansas area needs to keep getting bigger. Yep, we need to just grow people. I'm glad to see. I told them all to come out here to Collector's Cash. To participate in the regional, so it's good to see that we were getting people traveling from out of that area. What Jeremiah. is that that he just made? Purgatrio. Purgatrio again. Especially it to the zone Shizuku points to, too. Like, actually uh, use, utilizing that extra... Purgatrio is actually a really good play right here, because he's got so many, and Greg used up his Widow Anchor. He may have another Anchor, though. But at this point, there are so many cards on Greg's side of the field... I think the, Greg has double shared ride. One, two, three. No, the two shared rides are in the grave. One, two, three, four, five. That's an extra 1,000 attack points on Purgatrio. Oh, no. There's the Widow Anchor. Past turn. No, but he doesn't get to control it. That's Maybe. that's the end turn, but Greg's losing. Greg's lost both his Widow two of his Widow Anchors now. Why? Well, How did he do that? I thought Multi-roll. But Widow... Oh, because he hasn't used that one before yet. Yeah, that one was just normal. That one was new. Okay, I thought that both of them were set off that multi-roll. No, thankfully. <laughs> right? Oh, man, that's really unfortunate for Jeremiah to be in that position. Like I said, this is great, but I'm not seeing any of the Mech Knights. I guess he's not running the Search card. They have that new spell card that came out as a, a super rare in the, uh, the Special Edition set. That allows you to do the search, and I haven't seen that card out of him. Really not a lot of advantage that's, that to be had so far on the side of Jeremiah, and he's just really lost out on that opportunity. So now he's got the Purgatory on his side of the field, and he's going to be able to put out a whole bunch of damage right now. The Has good Jeremiah news is that that Widow damage? Anchor... Hmm? Has Jeremiah taken any damage? I, as far as I'm aware, I don't think any battle damage has been done on... on at this point. I would multi-roll pop my field spell to special array. I'm really surprised that he didn't just link away the Purgatrio into a Link 2 to, to do some kind of extension. He probably wanted to Kagari search first. I would, yeah, that makes sense. But he doesn't have enough, it looks like he does just have just enough spells in Grave to turn uh, Engage into a Pot of Greed. We need to change questions. the dice number to avoid confusion. He used two Widow Anchors on his opponent's turn. Sam, he Widow Anchored a... Uh, yeah, he used two. I don't remember what all he hit, but... Yeah, he, he hit uh, Alistair with the first one. And then, and and then, then Purgatrio the with the second one. 
But yeah, he needs to take it off now because he hasn't. Well, he used a Widow Anchor this turn. Never mind. Yeah, he's he's right. I would definitely be multi roll popping my. Oh, he multi roll popped the Purgatrio. Yeah, he just wanted to clear it off the board. I would have. Well, why didn't he attack first, though? That's a great question. I am uncertain as to why he did that. At this point, Greg might just be going through the motions. He might feel like getting the damage on the board isn't as important as being able to draw plus two off of engage. I just, in my opinion, at this point, the opponent's so low on resources, it was definitely worth it. Yeah, I would have definitely put the damage on the board and then just gone into main phase two and done exactly what he's doing now instead of worrying about Unless he's about trying to get into, like, does Greg play Sky Blaster today? Do we know? I think that Greg is playing Sky Blaster today. I'm not 100% on that, but I do believe he's playing the Sky Blaster version. Because if he is, I I can kind of understand he's trying to pot a greed into Sky, into Blaster, Sky Blaster to Blaster. OTK him yep. and be done with it. And that would make sense. Because, yeah, Sky Blaster is game. <laughs> I wish this, the camera would stop flickering on the color. But um, it's an excellent camera. I'm going to have to pick me up one. So there's the, the shark cannon. Reviving the Madness Invoker. Looks like he's getting ready to go into a Link 3. There's the Ray, so we're going Link 4. I think we're doing Boral Sword, you guys. Yep, there it is, Boral Sword. So we're going for a Boral Sword OTK. Mystical Space Typhoon to pop the multi-roll, get a ray on the field that he can put into defense mode. Yep, there's the ray. And we're doing Boral Sword. Attack with ray, attack with Boral Sword, turn ray into defense mode, attack with Boral Sword. And I'm pretty sure that's game. Yep, that's game, guys. Looks like Greg Farley took it round one. YG, baby. Hopefully, if Greg holds this out, we will see him in round four at this feature table. He is currently undefeated, so depending on how, how things shake out in this round, we'll see. Let's see if I can identify any other, um, any other folks on here of note. While we're waiting for the shuffling to go through. No, nope, but we're still at 94 tables into round three, which is a good sign. Looks like Aaron Dugan has one point so far in the tournament. That's a little unfortunate that he's had a loss and a tie playing Pendulum Magician. I would definitely hope that um, that have would have gone differently. Why am I so tired all of a sudden? I don't know. You haven't had enough caffeination in your system or something. Right? But you don't drink caffeine anymore. Well, that's the other I thing. I guess you decided to turn Mormon on us or something. I did. I mean, that's cool. Yeah. I took my Christianity to the next level. No, no judgment. Yeah, you go the fan fiction route. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to anybody in the chat I, who I, may be Mormon. A, yes, I, I apologize. <laughs> that should not be taken as a, as a slight. Please take that as a known yes. joke. But yeah, it is a very well known joke. It's practically a meme. I'm just saying it because that's what some people say. I have no preference for any. I, pr I provide no preferential treatment towards or against any group like that. We have a sense of humor that is probably frowned upon in some sections and of the world. And it certainly <laughs> should not reflect at all. Um, no, no opinions provided by any of the participants here reflect on the uh, official stance of Collector's Cash in any way, shape, or form. As a disclaimer. So, chat, tell us something. What deck do you think is going to win it all today? Uh, we have had we've given our opinions, but I'd like to know your all's. As well, we do have several people in the chat with us, so um, please let us know uh, what you guys think. It's very exciting. A uh, lot of Sky Striker we've seen today doing pretty well, so uh, I would not blame anybody who thinks that Sky Striker might win this one. Ha! Ha ha! Ha 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 ha! Or he's just laughing now randomly. Somebody's gassed the room. I'm just checking out all the 
cool board games. Collector's Cash is an awesome place, by the way. Now, since we're having a chance in between games, please be sure that if you are ever in the Lex, the Kansas area, that you come out to College and Flum, location of Collector's Cash. Come out here, check out your great, great assortment of games. They have not just TCG games, but they also have an excellent selection of board games and tabletop role-playing games, war games, etc. If you're looking for Dungeons and Dragons figures, magic cards, and uh, even uh, up-and-coming games like Final Fantasy and Dragon Ball Super, mm -hmm. Collector's Cash is, of course, an excellent place to do all of that. And then if you're not necessarily in the mood to buy, there's always a great community active here trading and playing games as well. So you can take advantage of the opportunity to come hang out with your, your other friends and just have some casual gameplay at the open tables that are at Collector's Cash um, here in Lenexa. So we're now into the second game of round three. Greg Farley is ahead by one. Having lost, I'm sure that the Sky Striker player has opted to go second, giving Greg an opportunity to set up at his advantage. Ooh, I'm seeing a mind crush in Greg's hand. That is going to be really problematic. Mind crush. Mind Crush is an well, excellent tech. Why did Greg decide that didn't go? Oh, because he, he, he knows he knew he was going first. Uh, invoked Mech Knight deck only ever wants to go second because what's that deck going to do going first but just make Mecha Bun pass? There's a Sky Striker. I'd rather do that. I don't want them setting the anchors. But I guess he probably sided in like Twin Twisters and yeah, he probably set up. Yeah, he's, he's probably set up to deal with back row at this point, and maybe he put in some cosmic cyclones to help banish some stuff to starve out multi roll. Ooh, he drolled him. That that, that works too. Yeah, droll <laughs> is a great opportunity to slow him down for a turn. But Sky Striker doesn't really care about droll. But Greg didn't get any monsters on the field, which is really strange. I guess he didn't want to waste the advantage that could be generated by his Kagari or Shizuku. So figuring that Mech Knight can't. Uh, What's the card over here? So there's the Alistair, and once he adds Invocation, you're going to see Mind Crush on the resolution. There's the Invocation, then Greg Mind Crushes it. Boom. My invocation's gone. I hope he chains Red Reboot. Please chain Red Reboot. Nope. <laughs> and that's game. It or he's showing him the rest of his hand. Uh, it's not going to be game, but he's in a bad situation. He's activating the second Magical Meltdown. Note to self, you just have to show them enough of your hand to quickly show them that, nope, I do not have another invocation, and then flip it back. Hold on one second, you guys.
What's up, you guys? We are back. We just had a little bit of a, uh, a, a conference, uh, just asking some questions and resolving some stuff. But uh, thank you guys for sticking with us the whole time. And uh, we are uh, we're still here in game two. We've got Greg handily controlling the field right now so far. Unfortunately, Jeremiah really hasn't been able to do anything. That mind crush really hurt the overall strategy of... Um, of Invoke Mech Knight, but again, we have not seen any Mech Knight cards, which is one of the real problems that we've been seeing. I think that that was something that uh, was being talked about in the chat as Yo, a yeah. problem. Let's see. An, oh, our boy Riley Cook from Team Y guys in the chat. Riley123 Kaiba. That is definitely Riley. Uh, Riley Cook, my Yu Gi Oh son, you guys. But yeah, so that'll be pretty interesting to see going forward. I need lunch. Yeah, we're definitely excited for lunch. I'm I am more excited than most other fat people to eat right now. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so hungry. It's not even funny. I had a small breakfast compared to my normal large breakfast. My girlfriend would have made me a larger breakfast. I just didn't want her in there cooking. <laughs> I was like, no, it's Saturday. Just relax. <laughs> oh, man. We're doing. Greg won game one. Yep. Game two. Looks, game two's looking pretty promising. Game two, two, I mean, that mind crush was just so clutch. The fact that he, he had that in hand at the beginning, it just created a situation that put Jeremiah on the back pedal. The fact that he hasn't been able to get a Mech Knight on the board in either game so far is a huge problem because the Mech Knights allow you to generate so much advantage and and really just, you know, Greg is playing, Greg's playing smart. He's playing column conscious. And unless Jeremiah gets a Mech Knight on the board, he really needs a Blue Sky. A Blue Sky or a Purple Nightfall, and that'll really help change the pace of the game. We gotta get through lunch too. Yep, we gotta get through lunch. The lunch break is gonna be coming up after this round, and then we will go into the last five rounds of Swiss. Looks like he's doing the mind control again. I guess he just didn't have uh, a it's Mech Knight in hand. That was the only card he had. That was it. Wow, that's just. Did he just activate it to give it back? Well, he puts it in the main monster that's the zone, only reason. which which does slow Greg down a little. But again, he can just. He can link it away. He can link it away. There's just so much he can do. It. The advantage is just zero cards in hand versus Sky Striker. It's just impossible. I mean, he's going to put Hayate out there and just... I mean, this is a terrible situation to be in. To be honest, yeah, this game is a wrap. I don't see where this is going to go from here. He's putting Shizuku to get the Shizuku search in the end phase. Is that a There's, he's, he's activating Hercules base. Is that a ghost bell in his hand? Uh, it might have been. Did he slide that in for the invocation? He possibly did, yeah. Looks like he didn't get anything good off of that. Top deck to two ashes and an MST. Well, hello, Jacob. With six Bs. He asked for a shout-out. Shout-out to Jacob with six Bs. Jacob. I probably did more Bs that are in the actual name there. Sorry about that. Jacob. And as we watch, as the Sky Striker deck slowly but surely does what it does. Outgrinds everybody. If it's not getting you lost, you know what? We haven't seen a single Goki. I am so glad for that, though. <laughs> I uh, just want to see the Gokis. My one regret is that, unfortunately, we just haven't seen any Mech Knights come out of Jeremiah's deck. If he had been able to get some Mech Knights on the board... He'd have been a lot better off, unfortunately, when Widow Anchor hit, uh, or when uh, when that Mind Crush hit, that, that just basically wrecked Jeremiah's whole strategy. There's the Alistair. And here comes a flipped comes, Widow Anchor. Yeah, he's going to flip Widow Anchor, take control, and 
Yeah, there's really just nothing he can do. At this point, I'd probably proceed to scoop phase because I, I'd be wanting to get to lunch. Yep, that's exactly what he's doing. Because I, I don't see how this ends. It looks like he's scooping. Yep, the slip is getting signed. We've got Greg Farley winning this match. And that is going to be round three, you guys. Greg Farley from Team Wise Guys taking it with the pure Sky Striker deck. And that is that is it, guys. We're going to go on mute for a minute, and we will check back with you, back with you guys here in a moment.
What's up you guys? This is Ian. I'm back on the stream with you. I have finished my lunch and we have got uh, something a little special for you guys. We're going to be taking some time before the round starts in 20 minutes to play a little GOAT format. We got Daniel Groa playing, uh, Aaron, um, I'm sorry I've forgotten Aaron's last name entirely in this exact second even though I'm friends with him on Facebook. Aaron Davis. Um, so I'm trying to find... I'm trying to find the little and they're shuffling up and getting ready to play thank you guys for sticking so much with us guys um, got a little goat control going on I made a mistake by deleting that didn't I? I didn't delete it but I'm trying to find it again Sorry guys, I'm going to cut the stream off for just a second and go back right up. Just one second, please guys, bear with me.